first go live of the year. Oh wait, we didn't. Go. We are. We be live. We be live, but not on on Twitch. Oh, it's always because Twitch. It's always Twitch. Yes, because um, we should pick the titles better, so that Twitch doesn't get upset with us. What do I? What do I say? You could just say Atheist, okay. Atheist Public News number 279. That's usually what we do okay. when it gives us problems. I'll just put AR News. AR News. Why is Twitch so picky with titles? It's very sensitive. A very sensitive very little sensitive. flower. <laughs> it's... Anyways, now we're live on Twitch as well. So we're live on uh, Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter, well, which is now X, apparently. What is it still Twitter? Don't even get me started. It's so Don't weird. even get Why me started. Doing... Why? Why? Why are you doing this? It's so, it's, uh, it's so stupid. Man. I, I, I like. I Anyways, actually really want. I actually really want to go on a rant about the whole you, like X thing. You want to go on a rant? Go on a rant. And that's not rant. really the best time. I mean, I, I'm no branding expert, right? It just seems absolutely insane to throw away completely a brand that existed for like a decade. You know what I mean? Over yeah. a decade. This yeah. is one of the most identifiable brands in the world. Yeah. And it'd be one I thing, mean, it's one thing if you do a rebrand. Twitter did a little bit of a rebrand before, but he just threw it out the window. Yeah. And his whole thing was yeah, that I'm, he was gonna buy this. Wait, 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 wait. Make it profitable. L let me let me make a point as well. Okay, so Meta, for example, when it changed from Facebook to Meta, the product itself stayed Facebook. And Google, for example, when it went to the parent company, when it went to Alphabet, what is that? Alphabet? Mm -hmm. Yeah. The product itself was still Google because they understand brand recognition. You don't throw away brand recognition. Facebook is still Facebook. It's the parent company that is now Meta. Anyways, I don't understand. I don't know what's it's crazy. Up. And he, this was yeah. his whole thing that he was going to make it profitable. Do you think this is purely ego and hubris? Mm -hmm. Like because yeah. he's so rich that he thinks he can really get away with this. Yeah, I don't know. Because don't know. even for companies as massive as Facebook and Meta, they still understand that they should defer to the smartest people in the room on that topic. Yeah. I don't it's know insane. What's going on. And yeah. the and the logo yeah. sucks. The it's new like logo sucks. It's, it's like an adult video. It's an adult video website. That's what it sounds like. It, it yeah, and it looks like it too. With the little yeah. X. Yeah. Okay. Anyways. It's so lame. It's so lame. Yeah. Anyways, we should get started, guys. So, guys, we're gonna be covering ten news items um, about religion and atheism from all around the world. Uh, this is the most uh, global atheist religion related uh, live stream that you will ever see anywhere okay so and we do this once a week same time with me and Susanna and it's not just our news that is global our audience is very global as well people I haven't asked yet and people are already telling us the where they're watching from but guys yeah let us know what you're watching from Nico is watching from Germany right wait she is from no, Japan she's trolling you're she's stop trolling, trolling us Shikha. you're from India as uh, you is how is this spacella spacelia is from sweden you can see no man is being honest from india and belgium kian from oh kian from belgium and then what else do we have oh we have paul from russia and oh you you mean you're muted you're muted you're muted you're muted go back Oops. Sorry, I was saying Delay. Indonesia in yeah. Norway. We got two people from Norway, New Zealand. Norway, yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. UAE. Okay, cool. Pol Poland, wow. Wow, wow. And Gray from UK. Okay, where is this panda? All right, guys, thank you so much for letting us know where you're watching from. Uh, Susie, what countries are, is our, are, are the news items that you selected from? Which countries um, have you picked? Oh, we have two stories from India, two stories from Iran, um, a Fuego, he, 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 <laughs> sorry, a very yeah fiery story from Iraq, um, Turkey, Afghanistan, uh, the UK, 
and the United States. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And is the news mostly tragic, funny, ridiculous, bizarre? Um, this week, it's mostly uh, bizarre, ridiculous. There's only one story that's like real tragic, like next level tragic. Mm. I like those weeks where the stories are mostly bizarre. You know, I yeah, think yeah, bizarre yeah. means bizarre means less tragic. More bizarre yes. means less tragic things that happen. Yes. yes. I mean, even the tragic story is bizarre in its own way. Um, yeah. But yeah. Okay. So I'm assuming that we could clap for the first news. Yes. I love yes. some religious backlash to movies. You can almost set your clock to it. It's so predictable. Um, yeah. <laughs> so let's get into it. All right. First news. First news, the bomb and the Bhagavad Gita. Oh, Nolan's Oppenheimer f sparks fury in India. Christopher Nolan's latest film, Oppenheimer, has sparked significant controversy in India due to a scene involving the Bhagavad Gita, a revered Hindu text. Actors Celian Murphy and Florence I know, Plug, I don't know how to pronounce her last name, plays uh, plain physicist J. Robert Oppenheimer and psychiatrist Gene Tatler, respectively, share an intimate moment while reciting a verse from the Bhagavad Gita with Murphy's character proclaiming, now I become death, I am become death, destroyer of the world. Despite the film's initial positive reception and commercial success in India, this perceived mishandling of sacred text has drawn fervent backlash. One Twitter user criticized the scene for, quote, mentioning a holy verses while having sex, calling it disrespectful and racist. <laughs> um, Uday uh, Mahukar, the Indian government's information commissioner, condemned the scene as a disturbing attack on Hinduism. In response to the uproar, Mahukar uh, has publicly urged Nolan to remove the controversial scene, written an open letter expressing his disapproval, and called upon the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting to investigate the movie, adding that those involved should face severe repercussions. This escalating controversy is emblematic of the delicate cultural sensitivities that global filmmakers must navigate in today's interconnected world. Okay, so let me read. So recap. much butt hurt. It's 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 a lot of butt hurt. It's a lot of butt hurt. So here's the situation in the you know new three hour long Oppenheimer, which I haven't seen by the way. Um, apparently there's a sex scene, and mm -hmm. during the sex scene, like the the love interest, the psychiatrist, like sees that. Oppenheimer is learning to read Sanskrit. She's like, "Oh, can you read this?" He's like, "Oh, well, I'm learning." I so she so while they're starting to have sex, she like makes him translate and recite words from the Gita. And so like as they're like having sex or initiating, they like have this interplay between like them and the Gita and so while they're getting while they're getting it on <laughs> he it says the famous quote like now i am become death destroyer of worlds and um so this is what apparently the backlash is about mishandling of sacred texts um and i've heard there were even moves to try to get people to put cgi like clothing onto them to re-release the film in India. Which is like pretty wild because that's like what that's like some hijab level stuff. Like in Iran, they how they mm. like put hijabs on animations after the fact and it looks super awkward. Like this is like the Islamization of India. Like it's amazing that a lot of people use in India are trying to use Hindu tradition as a way to tackle islam but as a way to fight other cultures they're becoming more and more like islam their mm -hmm. ideology is becoming more and, and this has been a you know 
long process. Like this is not something recent. The, the fact that Hinduism keeps stealing stuff, you know, practices and values and things to be butthurt about from Islam has been happening for, you know, since more than a thousand years now, right? I mean, um, even like being devotees to certain gods, even that has been argued by certain scholars that they got that from um, from Islam. Right. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. The submission to Allah and everything. Oh, my God. It wasn't like that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But this is interesting because, you know, they, a lot of these um, Hindus who get butt hurt over the smallest little thing, um, they tell us that we criticize Hinduism from an Abrahamic mindset. And we don't understand Hinduism because we have we have an Abrahamic background and we, that's how we look at Hinduism. But it's interesting because they themselves are are the ones who are looking at everything from an Abrahamic mindset when they are getting offended over stuff like this. Um, and a lot but, of people yeah, were but, like, can we just allow yeah. people to have artistic di discretion? Yeah. Like, or they were trying to cut this scene out of the movie, like have the film boards go back and cut the scene out of the movie. And I read this article um, from some Indian journalists and they were talking about like, why are we treating adult adults in our country like children? When yeah. we take that mindset, we are infantilizing our own Indian nationals, seeing that they do not have like the critical thinking to like see an artistic expression and maybe contextualize it within the film. Maybe think about what the director was trying to say when doing a scene like this. How the actors like it's it's treating indian adults like children it's it's i can't believe it i mean i can though because you see this impetus across cultures right but it still um sometimes shocks me but armin i thought it would be funny i mean you you might have more commentary but there's i wanted to maybe do a dramatic reading of the open letter to uh, the film board about this movie from the really butthurt information minister. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, where is it? If you scroll down a little bit more, um, we should have it in here. Yeah, here we go. Okay, but you need to open it on Twitter because it's so long. No, it's not Twitter. It's X. Oh my God, don't do this to me. <laughs> <laughs> okay you want to read it okay that's actually a problem i'm not going to be saying to people oh did you see that x yeah yeah yeah, yeah. did you see what's and been happening say... on x what it's twitter I... what is happening i'm having a mental crisis <laughs> and what and do you re-x it now oh it still retweets what I is know. it what i How heard I, I, I heard a rumor that they're just going to call it reposts Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, it's embarrassing. Yeah, go on. Read okay. This From Uday Mahurkar to Mr. Christopher, Christopher Nolan, director, Oppenheimer Film, date July 22nd, 2023, regarding film Oppenheimer's disturbing attack on Hinduism. Dear Mr. For Christopher Nolan, Namaste from Save Culture, Save India Foundation. It has come to our notice that the movie Oppenheimer contains a scene which, which makes a scathing attack on Hinduism. As per social media reports, a scene in the movie shows a woman makes a man read Bhagavad Gita aloud while getting over him and doing sexual intercourse. She's holding Bhagavad Gita in one hand and the other hand seems to be adjusting the position of their reproductive organs. <laughs> The Bhagavad Gita is one of the most revered scriptures of Hinduism. Gita has been the inspiration of countless sayas's, uh, brahmacharis, and legends who live a life of self-control and perform selfless noble deeds. We do not know the motivation and, behind, and logic behind this unnecessary scene on the life of a scientist. But this is a direct assault on religious beliefs of a billion billion tolerant Hindus. Rather, it amounts to waging a war. Waging a war on the Hindu community. And it almost appears to be part of a broader, a larger conspiracy of anti-Hindu forces. <laughs> Wait, I need a second to just like 
unpack that. Armin, can you just like unpack that? <laughs> this is waging a war. This is wow. waging a war. And actually, this just goes to show that what they were saying about all these broader anti-Hindu conspiracies, they were right. Armin, they were right this whole time. <laughs> Oppenheimer proved it. Okay. <clears throat> Let me continue. We are living in a very polarized world. The agencies, media, and politics, even your Hollywood film industry, is very sensitive about the fact that the Quran and Islam is not depicted in any manner that may offend the value system of a common Muslim, even if you make something based on Islamist terrorism. There is a, <laughs> there is a term that has become popular for those who attempt to cross this red line. Islamophobia. Why well, should not the same courtesy also be extended to Hindus? You have a great admiration for India in your art of filmmaking. We believe that if you remove this scene and do the needful, do the needful to win the hearts of Hindus, it will go a long way to establish your credentials as a sensitized human being and gift of your friendship to billions of nice people. We urge on behalf of a billion Hindus in timeless tradition of lives being transformed by revered Gita to do all that is needed to uphold dignity of their revered book and remove this scene from your film across the world. Okay, so he's not it's not even good enough to remove it in India. You need to remove this across the world. Across the world, wow. Should you I choose mean... to ignore oh my god, this is so crazy. Listen, should you choose to ignore this appeal, it would be deemed as a deliberate assault on Indian yes. civilization. Eagerly <laughs> await oh action, founder oh. of the Save Culture, Save India Foundation. <laughs> Honestly, I'd read this before, but rereading it again, I discovered new gems that I forgot were in here. <laughs> Amazing. Wow. The levels. This is beyond as Muslim butthurt. Like, this is getting to beyond levels of Muslim butthurt. Like, at least Islamic countries have been asking Marvel. Wait a second. Wait, I'm making a point. At least Marvel uh, Islamic countries ask for versions of the movie specifically for Islamic countries. You know what I mean? Like if you see what, or China, for example, asks for like versions for it to be released in China. They don't ask for it to be completely removed from all of the world. This is like getting, the levels of Bret Hart is getting beyond Muslim. What? What is, you, okay, read the funny comments. so funny. <laughs> guys did you know that i don't I, I don't know how long the sex scene is i promise you it isn't longer than five minutes <laughs> okay how does it feel to have you looking? you watched how does it how did no i'm saying i haven't but it, i'm just yeah. practically speaking yeah. how does it feel as 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 an as a as an indian citizen of a uh, of the descendant of a thousands of year old civilization that maximum like five minutes of a film from a different country is a threat to your civilization it's kind of insulting honestly <laughs> it's definitely insulting <laughs> you know this is just the beginning by the way because as sensitive as many muslims are they have now it's been a while since I've experienced um, attacks and I mean, this is not even an attack, right? And they're just butthurt. Imagine if we find we actually start seeing attacks um, on Hinduism on a mass scale. I mean, Muslims have grown a bit of like not in most many places, but at least globally. Muslims are becoming more and more desensitized to anti-Islamic views, not just insensitive stuff, but also anti, fully anti-Islamic views. But uh, Hindus, because unlike what these people are saying, like globally, there's not that much of a content against Hinduism or anti-Hindu content, right? Or 
stuff that Hindus find offensive. So I, I think it's going to start. And I can't just wait to see how, how much the, the level of butthurt that is coming our way, I'm predicting is going to be massive. Like we're just having a taste of much, much, much more butthurt to come. And it's going to be it's going to be very significant because India is growing as a major economic superpower on the planet. And what you're reading comments. Okay, read the comments that you're reading. One. You know, you know, this you know, one this. is so good. This one is so good. Cosmic Ethan <laughs> yeah. is now we know how the Indus Valley civilization was wiped out. It must have been sexy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was worth it. That was worth it. <laughs> so good. <laughs> That was good. That was good. Oh my god. Well, okay, well, right, apparently I mean, a lot of people in our um live chat went to go see the movie and they enjoyed it. So that's awesome. Yeah, like Newman, thank yeah. you. Gave us a super chat. Thank you for the super chat, Newman. Seeing I watched the movie, it was so nice. I had fun. Well, I'm happy for you. Um mm -hmm. yeah. Do you have any intention of seeing this movie, Armin? Yeah, of course, of course. By the way, this uh, shows also how countries who act behave like this is because they have many people in there. I'm trying not to generalize. Have inferiority complex. When you see mm -hmm. reactions like this, is because of an inferiority complex. Because when you do anything with Japanese culture, you don't see the, the backlash like this from Japan. You know what I mean? Because because they know they're they're significant. <laughs> I mean, they don't have an inferiority complex. They don't feel attacked because they are they see themselves. They don't feel like they have anything to prove because it's already there. You can see that Japan mm -hmm. is a major country when it comes to culture. They're they're head of many other countries. They're a powerhouse. It's only when you they're a powerhouse exactly uh, because. Many Indians see themselves as left behind as the rest of the world. They have something to prove. So any form of any the smallest amount of um, any anything that they see that might come at their expense, uh, they 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 have to react to it because they're so defensive about it. Mm -hmm. Which actually brings us to one of the super chats <laughs> because Oxymoron is again being defensive. Oxymoron is one of those sensitive Hindutva people who well, tries, it's so who... interesting because hyper nationalism hype hyper nationalism yeah. is a response right. to an inferiority complex <laughs> exactly exactly so you want to read like what oxymoron is saying to... um, <clears throat> well thank you for the super chat oxymoron saying oppenheimer <laughs> seems to have understood the gita as traditional hindu uh acharyas Sorry, I can't pronounce things. So it's not that Gita is very difficult scripture to understand. So there's already good contrast to Atheist Republic's take. I actually agree that Gita is not very hard to understand. I read it and it's very easy to understand. Uh, however, even though the Gita is very easy to understand, Oxymoron has a very hard time understanding <laughs> So I, as somebody who doesn't come from a Hindu background, have read it and understood it. But Aksimaran, because he's a he he's very sensitive about his culture and wants to defend it, when I point the violent and the misogynistic parts of Hinduism, he again use this Islam, they learn this again from Muslims, right? So you know how Muslims, when you point to them, the 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 big, the misogynist or misogynistic or violent parts of Quran, they come up with excuses to try to make the Quran seem something else. Basically, oxymoron does the same thing when I point to him how the Gita or other texts in the scripture is absolutely disgusting and violent. The Gita, by the way, guys, it's the most violent um, religious scripture alive more than the Quran. We have studied it. So and, and Oxymoron doesn't agree with that because he doesn't understand the Gita, even though he thinks it's very easy to understand. If you do, by the way, this is thank you, Oxymoron, because this gives me an opportunity to uh, tell people where to go understand the Gita. Um, if you go to the homepage of our um, channel, if you scroll down, there's a playlist. It says defeating Hinduism. So if you want to understand how disgusting and violent and misogynistic and bigoted Hindu scripture is, if you go to this play playlist, we have created this for you. It's called Defeating Hinduism. And there's some videos here for you to watch, for you to understand, if you truly want to understand Hindu scripture. Anyways, thank you, Aksimura, for 
giving us this chance to advertise that again. Yeah. Um, let's Honestly, I don't know. I think, have you ever read any of the Man Manus Murti? Because I think that's, yes. the, okay, I think that's actually worse. That's the most disgusting, but the worst so is the bad. Gita. Like, it's yeah, but shocking. It's, it's, I still can't, it's the most, <laughs> it's the most bigoted, racist thing I've ever read in my entire life. It's like, it's, 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 yeah. it's a horrible text. It makes mm. me sad knowing that people have had their lives ruled by what's in that text for hundreds of years. Um, yeah. that, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Kaz Kazuki Heathen is right. The Manusmirti is so bad that even Hindus disown it. Yeah, but unfortunately, the the Supreme Court like uh, uh, has like one of the main courts in India has like a um, statue of him. Was a smash a statue of the writer of the manuscript, right? right? Yeah, like Manu. The, the yeah, Manu, which is basically the version of Adam and Noah at mm -hmm. the same time in Hinduism. Um, and it's considered sacred text by people in government, so that's that's horrible. Um, yeah. but imagine how bad your scripture has to be that even the people who belong to the religion they're like, Yeah, no, <laughs> no, not like it. <laughs> it's so bad. It's so bad. Okay, we got. But to be fair, there was chat. someone in the live chat. I can't find it, and they were right. They're saying the good news is, is that ninety nine percent of Hindus like don't yes. read these texts, and so we like always have to keep that in mind. That yeah. it's yeah. So that's that's a bit that's a so here's the thing. That's why I say Hindu scripture, you know, Hindu scripturally is the worst text, like even worse than Islam scripturally. But the thing that Hinduism has that Islam doesn't is that nobody takes the script seriously in Hinduism. <laughs> like it's just mostly about the rituals and the chants. Like people in Hinduism don't go out like, let me go. Other than the caste system, which is disgusting, um, people don't go refer to Hinduism to feel to see like what did what sh they should be doing. Right. So that's the good like in Islam, people take their scripture more seriously as a guide to life. And in Hinduism, I mean, most people in Hinduism don't even know what's in their scripture. So so that's a good thing. Um, yeah, yeah. Mogambo has a good point. I see, in the Gita is just a story, but the man of Smriti was followed by people. Yes. And well, actually, he, it was the basis of law. That's partially because the, of the Gita. British. That's not true. The Gita is treated just like a story. OK, but if you read it, it's it has moral lessons. It has very dangerous moral lessons, but nobody. But it's not just a story. It's a story that is supposed to guide you to understand, to take a lesson from that. And if anybody does, it basically excuses genocide on anybody, whether they're evil or not. But again, as you said, people treat it like a story. Thankfully. <laughs> All right. Um, we have a few super chats yeah. and other comments I want yeah. to dig into. Um, so Bengali Hindus is saying, read the Parashar Smriti. It's worse than the Manu Smriti. It's worse. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm scared. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm scared. Yeah. Um, and Gaijin American has, I think, a thoughtful and <laughs> a, a, a very, a, th this is, this is the, the, a very good way to think about things. He's replying to Oxymoron and he's saying, the best thing you can do to your culture is understand, critique, and improve on the texts your ancestors passed down to you. Well, yes. I mean, I don't think, yeah, I, I mean, in, yeah, most of it I agree with, but the improved text, I think... I don't think that you could improve the text. I think you could treat it as a, a cultural and historical text rather than the guide to life. I think that would be an improvement. I think you yes. could take, uh, yes, that would be the improvement. Not, not to change the uh, scripture, but to just see it as what it is, as a, as a valuable piece of history and culture and something to understand the people at the time and, and how ideas progress and how, the the dance between culture and religion and politics there's a lot to learn from that but if you look at the text as a guide to life that's where the harm comes from 
Well, it, it reminded me of something. And so I wrote down this quote that I heard recently. So I put it in the live chat. And this this quote, like, it really, really stuck with me. And the quote is, it's not the role of traditions to serve the people who perform them. It's the role of the traditions to serve the people who perform mm -hmm. them, not the role of the people to serve the traditions. That's right. That's right. That's right. I heard this from Theremin Trees in one of his videos. And I was like, that's holy right. crap, that is so right. These traditions that we still continue that came from our ancestors, they should serve us. Right. We are not obliged to serve them. They should serve Perfect. us in, in increasing the value and enjoyment of our lives. So I just want everyone to keep that in mind because I was like, you know what? That's actually puts it perfectly. Um, okay. Uh, so let's read the other super chats. Gaijin American gave us another one saying Black Panther in India omitted Glory to Hanuman. Oh. I'm, a, I'm confused. Was it? Oh, meaning when the so, Black Panther came out, they took that part out? There was a Glory to Hanuman in Black Panther? I didn't know that. Or is, is he true? making a joke? I don't know. Sometimes, you know. Can, yeah, sometimes we have to be careful with Gaijin American. <laughs> It's a little esoteric, okay? It's like I need a cipher. I need to I need to divinate no, the meaning didn't, didn't. from the heavens. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um uh Varun gave us a super chat. Thank you, saying are did you guys know of the vegetarian only allowed poster put up in the tech technical institution akin to IET, excuse me, MIT. Uh, canteen or cafeteria in India. I didn't hear about this, but if this is a story that you would like us to cover on this show, you can go on wow. our Discord. Link is in the description. And you can put um, a good, credible source about this story in our news suggestions channel on our Discord. And um, mm. that's where we go look for stories where you can suggest stories every week. And if I take mm. a look and I like it, you might see us talking about this on the show next week. So please send us a source so, on so, Discord. So here's the thing. People are saying that there, there was glory to Hanuman on uh, Black Panther, which is why would you admit that? That seems like a that seems like a com compliment. I don't understand. That seems like Anyways. exactly the kind of thing that they would want to be in here. Okay. Isn't that so exactly funny. what they want to hear? I'm confused. Um, and... um. Oxymoron, thank you for another super chat, said, I am devil's spawn, uh, meaning of our membership. How about I pose a series of questions to you on your Gita's take? And you answer, you can title it Defeating Hindutva. Mm, well, I mean, maybe late, maybe at some point we will do that. I'm going to make some series of videos on Hinduism at some point. Right now, we are very busy with the with everything that is on our, on, on our plate. Um because we're doing the news, we're doing secular jihadists. The Persian show is picking up really fast, and we're doing that. And I'm also doing I'm, I'm on the ACA on the ACA on the ACA. We have a lot on show. our plate right now. Like we are overwhelmed. We have a lot I'm not gonna lie. Yes, yes. But at some point, I will get back to Hinduism for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have my eyes on you. <laughs> I'm I'm coming for you. Okay. Don't think you're Get safe. <laughs> Get ready. <laughs> you take this time to brace yourself and prepare. No, you just got rid of the last super chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get by the back. I brought it back. I brought it back. Okay, okay. Thank you. And Erkan gave us a super chat. Thank you. Saying in Islam's case, what holds Islam back is Sharia, not the Quran. I in Islam's case, what holds Islam back is Sharia, not Quran. I completely disagree. Uh, yeah. What holds Islam back is Sharia. Are you saying, first of all, Sharia, I mean, are you talking about the Hadith? Because Sharia has multiple sources. Sharia has Quranic sources and had, and Sunnah sources. So Sharia and Quran are not mutually exclusive. Um, I think, but I do agree that hadith, the Sunnah is the major source of Sharia. But if you're saying that Sharia is like, had the hadith sources in Islam is what people point to to show how horrible Islam is to and that's what makes Islam harder to spread because in modern day um, the within hadith sources there's a lot of things to point to 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 embarrass Islam 
I do agree with that. There's more stuff that you can find in Hadith. However, remember that Quran has wife beating in it. The Quran has t- t- taking sex slaves and war in it. The Quran has child marriage in it. So the Quran is also still filled. The Quran has the idea that a woman's testimony is half of a man. Uh, and, uh, and the inheritance of a woman is less than a man. So all of this is in the Quran as well. So there's plenty of, even if you get rid of all of the hadith, the Quran still has plenty of stuff that you could attack it, attack Islam for. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So can we clap for the next news? Oh my God. This, you picked it. You, you, you saw this. You saw I'm this. so excited to talk about this. I'm okay. so excited to talk about this. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. I mean, right. who doesn't love a good sex scandal, especially when it revol- involves religious authorities, especially when you make it <laughs> <laughs> So let's get into okay. it. All right, can I clap? Can I clap for this? Yes. Okay. Next news. Next news. Scandal gay sex tape of Iranian hijab enforcing official leaked. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> In a scandal that is stirring uproar across social media, Reza uh, Sekati, a senior official and known hijab enforcer in Iran's Ministry of Culture and Islamic Guidance in Gilan province, which is in the north, was abruptly ousted following a leak of a salacious sex tape involving him and an unidentified young man. Saikati, notorious for his rigorous implementation of Islamic dress codes, including the establishment of a hijab supermarket and a hijab-themed exhibition hall, was reportedly dismissed by order of Iran's culture ministry under President Ibrahim Raisi's rule. The, sp- the specifics of the dismissal remain murky, with the culture minister, Mohammed uh, Mahdi Ismaili, vaguely citing, quote, failure to adhere seriously to implementing the hijab law as grounds for the recent dismissal within the ministry. Amidst ongoing nationwide protests sparked by the police custody death of Masa Amini, the reemergence of Iran's morality police, this scandal has ignited a new wave of controversy and tension within the heart of the Islamic Republic. Okay. So this is a bit spicy because we talked about last week how the morality police kind of in preparation for Muharram has come back to the streets of Iran. And there was an incident that happened recently in the city of Rasht where there were three women that were going to be um, arrested and basically kidnapped by morality police in unmarked vans and citizens came and prevented their arrest. And then there was a huge demonstration right in the heart of the city of Rasht, right? Which is in Gilan province. And this is happening at the same time as one of their main hijab enforcers gets caught doing the frisky with another young man on tape. Now, for those who don't know, homosexuality, especially doing a homosexual act, is punishable by death in the Islamic Republic. So to catch one of their main enforcers of that province, enforcers of religious rule, doing this kind of activity, It has caused a massive scandal. (laughs) And the hypocrisy of the regime, I mean, we all know it. We all know it. But it's just on display like never before once again. Because we know how civilians are treated by the authorities. You can get shot dead in the street for nothing. They will RAPE you in prison systematically, whether you're a child, a teenage boy, a man, or a woman. They will torture you. They will kill you with torture. They will execute you. They will 
suffocate you to death by hanging you slowly from a crane. Okay. Like they will fabricate charges against you. They will violate their own actual laws to just push you through the system faster so that they can execute you faster to scare at people. They will hang you in public. Okay. Like, I mean, I could just go on and on and on and on, on and on and on. But when this video came out, you know what some of the other ministers said? What other people in parliament said? Armin, they said that it's actually against the Sharia to expose someone on a video like this. Mm -hmm. They even said it's worse. They said that the video being exposing this guy is worse than the action. They're excusing the guy. They're like, if this was other people, this guy would be screwed. But when it's their own people, they're like, instead of they're going after the people who leaked the video, they're like, that is worse. Yeah. D excuse me. Ex all, all the former Muslims in the chat, did you know that exposing a video like this is apparently actually worse than homosexuality itself? By the way, usually I agree. Okay. You, I, I mean, I agree, but not with this guy. <laughs> I mean, Wait, like, let, mean? let's you just agree be clear. I agree that it, because it was consensual, it was completely consensual. They were having, they were having a good time, and we don't condemn that, except the fact that they're hypocrites. Yeah. They, we, like the, the the only reason why we are, you know, this. So if this was any uh, a person. That was just having consensual sex with another. It was, it was the guy. The other dude was adult. The other guy was consenting. They both had, were having fun. So it seems like, yeah. Why? Obviously, if this was any other situation, the person who leaked the video did something immoral. But the problem is that these are the same people who um, destroy other people for living for doing something like this. For much. These are less. the same people. For much less. You know, these are the same people who are pushing an Islamic lifestyle by law and punish people who don't abide by it. So in this case, yeah, screw these people. Like, you know, your hypocrisy is being exposed. We're celebrating the fact that this got leaked. I just want to I just want to make it clear that this is a special case that we're celebrating that we don't obviously a, a consensual sexual relationship between two um, adult males is nothing to be ashamed of. Unless oh, yeah, we don't give a fuck about that. Like, <laughs> yeah, but I, I know, I know we don't. But some people who might be new here might might think that we are. I just want to be clear with somebody that might be new here, right? Because it, what I'm happy about is that a lot of people um, have keep clarifying that you know the people who are against Islamic Republic, they're like, let's just be clear, we're not anti-LGBT. So I'm oh, so glad awesome. to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So because even LGBT hasn't been yet normalized in Iran as much as we like. But mm -hmm. the fact that I'm seeing a lot of people within the opposition are very sensitive about constantly, like when they expose this guy and they're sharing the video around and like attacking this guy, I'm enjoying the fact that they're all coming, like a lot of them are coming out like, hey guys, let's be clear here. We're not anti-LGBT. So I enjoy, I enjoy them clarifying that everywhere they're posting this right so that's good that's a good thing <laughs> look at this growth you love to yeah, see this it. Is this. look at this i growth. love to see that yeah yeah that's very good i like that yeah 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 but armin uh, like okay so you you know are our local farsi speaker so like tell us like the fallout that's been happening oh like, my god the this response has... like just just give me the juice okay give me the behind yeah. the scenes juice <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, Kian is asking, is this publicly known in Iran? Yeah. Is it? yeah. <laughs> this this has been a major but, Okay, so this this happened at the worst time possible, okay? Because it's coming at the anniversary of uh, Mahsa's um, murder, right? Uh, the anniversary of the Mahsa's revolution starting. Um, it's it's um, it's coming at the time that the government is trying to reintro reintroduce enforcing hijab laws, right? And now, like people are reminded about the, the hypocrisy of the people who are enforcing the hijab laws, um, and and the worst of all, it's happening. It happened right at the beginning of Muharram, <laughs> which is the holiest. 
which is the time in the Islamic calendar where people try to uh, virtue their Islamic credentials and everybody is trying to outcompete being Islamic. Um, you know, the people who are with the government, they're trying to like brag about how Muslim they are and how, you know, and this and right at the beginning of Muharram, this this is this was the start of Muharram. This is not that was not a good look for the government. It, it just basically reminded everybody. <laughs> this was not a good look. This is not a good look. Yeah, it's just reminding. It's just such a at the at at the time that the government has the lowest amount of support ever, and it keeps getting lower and lower. It, the speed of the government support falling is increasing. So it's 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 not just the speed; it's acceleration. But right when it's the government is tr trying to get any form of legitimacy, trying to get back any of the legis all the legitimacy that is lost right at the middle of all of this people everybody is being reminded of how hypocritical these people are and what they are pushing on other people is not something that they abide by themselves this is a this is a const constant this is a very con um, famous narrative like this is something that everybody talks about like these people are hypocrites and they don't even they themselves even uh, don't abide by the rules that they push on people and this has been something that people Except believe the difference for a while. is when they get caught yeah. in not following those rules they get leeway they get, they get off easy but yeah. those of us who don't want to follow it our lives are put at stake we have to flee yes, but, our families face untold trauma through the sheer level yeah. of devious abuse that these hardliners enforce upon us. But they and their children live a completely different lifestyle and they have the luxury to get away with zero, little to no consequences. It's exactly. such, it's cruelty. It's such cruelty. Yeah. But um, like, yeah. Are there any good memes coming out of this? Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. There's a little on Instagram, but I don't know if I can show them. Have you seen the video? I haven't seen the video. No, I haven't. I haven't been once okay. finding. <laughs> so the person who leaked the video, he says, "I have so much more." <laughs> that's a, yeah. The thing that's yeah, the juicy is that this video was apparently taken in one of the ministry's guest houses. So this video was right. done like on government property of the Islamic Republic. And so do you think that they have a hidden camera of more stuff that officials are doing in these kinds of right. guest houses? I don't know. But the person who leaked this video says that if you don't like take action against this person or something, I don't know what his demands are. I'm going to leak more video. And he says in one of the videos I have that they rub off the, the cum with a holy thing like with something sacred islamically sacred so he says like i have and you know i have that video right because now you know because you know that happened so he says like if you don't want that to be released like given to my demand so i don't know if he's bluffing or not okay but that's what he's claiming he has more videos like that <laughs> so... oh my oh, god so so there's an old, oh so he oh I I've, I've listened to the I haven't watched the video but I've listened to the audio between the conversation between the older guy and the the young boy the younger man that he's like using um, oh I think the younger guy is a, I think the younger guy is a besiege right oh <gasps> um, no! <laughs> yeah so they having chit chat about politics and stuff before their sex right and the young boy tells the guy that you've gotten fat. Right? Like, why are you getting so fat? And the the guy, the main <laughs> guy, he says, like, oh, it's, my work is so stressful and it's so demanding. And people hate that. People who listen to that, they're like, yeah, like, his job is to enforce Islamic laws and morality upon people. And he's like, oh, my job has been so demanding while he's doing this un-Islamic thing. <laughs> That's crazy. Right. Oh my God! Yeah, <laughs> the is 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 the young boy complains like, "Why are you getting so fat?" <laughs> like, I, I don't, I don't want to see this. <laughs> Yo! No, but they, they're joke, but they're joking about it. So, I don't know. if it was, if it was, if <laughs> Bubba, you getting fat? <laughs> <laughs> if this wasn't. If this, if these people were not hypocrites, it was a wholesome moment. 
Like they're mm. chit, they're talking, they're chit chatting, they're having fun, they're joking around, and you're like, you know what? You guys are such hypocrites. That this was a this was a completely pure and wholesome relationship. If if you weren't being so mean to other people, oh, I forgot to mention. So yeah, the guy says that wasn't when, a paramilitary guy that goes out and terrorizes people. Yeah. So here's the thing. The in the other video, the the younger boy, the younger man rubs the come off with the holy, the sacred thing, and the older guy like says, like, do you know what you just wiped off this with? Like he's like oh, shocked. Like, do you know what you just did? <laughs> so they tell. <laughs> Wait, this is in the audio. Did you hear this audio? No, no. The, so the the audio that I heard is about like you're getting fat part, but the uh -huh. audio this is in the video that the other the person that leaked this video claims it's in the other video okay. that hasn't been leaked okay. yet. Yeah. So I don't. So the part the part that says like you're getting fat, and he says like my job is too demanding. I've heard that that part is out. That part has been leaked. Mm -hmm. But the second part, he is the one that he's warning about leaking. Yeah. <laughs> holy Yo, this is, saying holy king you know shit. i knew this story was wild but you came with so much more wild stuff. <laughs> I, didn't know this guy was a I didn't know people want to see the video <laughs> Yo, <laughs> seriously hey, but here's the thing i do love in the gay world like a good bear otter combination like i'm imagining this besiege guy is a little bit more of an otter like this is all gay terminology for people to know and if he's fat yeah. if 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 this reza guy is fat then he would be the bear a little hairy yeah like this this is yeah. cute yeah imagine imagine an older <laughs> chubby man with a younger CG boy yeah so that's the that's what's happening here this is Anyways. wild <laughs> this is wild this is wild armin when you were growing up in for those who don't know if you're a man in iran you have to do compulsory service so a lot of people get conscripted to different wings of oh, the yeah. military and a lot of people get conscripted to the irgc right or right. to be a besiege like tech technically my ex-boyfriend was at one point like a besiege hospital helper guy because <laughs> he had to be. He, he was forced to be. Anyways, um, so when when men go through these services, are there gay activities that happen in these services? Oh, yeah, for sure. So much. Tell me time. everything. <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to. <laughs> Tell me everything. Come I've been, on. I've been told things that I don't even want to talk about. Okay, because, but I, I, um, yeah, I, I will tell you off camera because I don't think I think we we're gonna get flagged. <laughs> I tell you, like after I will tell you what somebody told us this on the Persian show. He was like, we were talking. We had a show on the Persian Atheist Republic Persian channel about introducing people to kink and stuff, right? Because a lot of people don't understand you know, did this world in Iran and I was like, how did a show introducing them to them about like consent and like, you know, um, safe words. And I was just had a show about that. And there was this guy that showed up and he was like, I'm so glad you guys are telling you, telling all this. I had so much shame because of the things that I did during my military service. And then he started describing what he did during his military service. I'm like, okay, you don't need to share. There's too much. Detail. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I can't, I, I have, I, it's, it was so, I, I will tell you off camera what that happened because he was like, he was like, we had such a good time. It was amazing. It was the best experience of my life. And I had so much shame. And this show is making me not be ashamed of it. I was like, okay, that's good. You can enjoy it. You don't have to tell other people that. Okay. There's a, just because I'm telling you not to, not to have shame. It doesn't, it doesn't mean that other people want to hear it. Okay. I don't, yeah. don't want to hear this. You, if you enjoy it, you could enjoy that, but I don't have to like it. If I'm disgusted by it, that doesn't mean that you should be ashamed. But I, I was, I'm, <laughs> so I don't know. It was weird. I will tell you off camera what he told me. It was so bad. I mean, I don't Yo. even. Want to... <laughs> Yo. I mean, I bad. Mean... I mean, bad. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. If you're having that reaction, I know it's got to be wild. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By the way, I didn't go to military service because I got this card. What is this card? So this this card, wait, hold on. 
this card shows, tells says that I did my military service. Why is it not showing? Um, here, let me hold this. This card, look, look, it says, does it show? So this is my, this card is my Basiji card. Let me show you my picture. This is my picture. Yeah. So it says, Oh my God. That, how old are you? Like 18 in that photo? I don't know. I, I don't know how old I was, but so it basically says that I did my military service. But you didn't. Your parents paid off someone to do it for you, right? Yeah. This card this card claims that I have done my military service for two years, and I did not. <laughs> I did not go there for one day. <laughs> so basically, you pay you pay somebody to that pay somebody that tells that you get a card that says that yeah you did your military service. That's how I managed to leave the country. <laughs> I know, but I know a lot of people that got out of their, well, not a lot of people. I know one guy who got out of doing his military service because of like scholarship, basically. Is that possible? Um, yes, that is possible. That is possible. Yeah. I think my dad got that. And then I know other people that just had to do it. So isn't that kind of weird that like, I mean, it's not weird because it's normal within the country, but I'm like, oh, yeah, technically my friend was a Basiji. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, it's not a Basiji. That, that, if you did your military service, that doesn't make you a Basiji. No, but That's sometimes true. you get put to different wings, yeah. right? And yes, so, like, yes, yes. the person that I'm thinking about, he, well, he, didn't, he wasn't yeah. out on the street patrolling or anything. He was doing, like, hospital work. But technically he was a Basiji at that time. Right. Yeah. How would you define okay, what should... a CG is for those who don't know? Just by the way, morality, po mo plain clothed morality police. Mm -hmm. That would be the yeah. Anyways, we should get to the next news, yes. and I'm going to put myself down so you could talk about this, and I'll be right back. Okay. Wait, so can wait, we, we, have, uh, we have some super chats first. Oh, we have super chat. Oh yeah, we do. Oh, New we have so super chat saying Islam is flowing in Christianity. Wow, just wow. I'm not sure I understand what this. Well, means. I think it means following. You think he's following? Oh, okay. By the way, no, I don't think this, this is this is not a Christianity exclusive thing. Yeah, but okay, yeah. Um, and uh, Crassy Flung gave a super chat. Thank you, saying love your show, guys. Keep up the good work. FYI, for your information, everyone is a little bit gay, even if they don't want <laughs> to admit it. I know I am by pride. Yeah, that's right, Cassie. Crassy, tell them. Bisexual pride, we're here. I'm about it. Is that true? Is everybody a little bit gay? Based on some studies, most people have some level of same-sex attraction. It's just like, how much do you embrace it? Not everyone has enough to actually make them want to have sex with the same sex. But some people have some degree of attraction. I think Armin is the only person, he's the straightest man I've ever met. Like, he's the one man where I'm like, there is 0% of him that is gay. It's actually crazy. It's like, so not gay. That, I mean, I don't want to share personal okay, details, but, but it's wild. Okay not, that, <laughs> okay, not that there's anything, like, we're not no, saying, no, no, we're no. not just saying, I, I know, but I just want people to don't, don't think that we're saying that this is this something that we're trying to say that being not being gay is a good thing okay okay i mean if i had any if i was gay i would be proud of telling people that i'm gay okay so there's there's that okay i just don't want people to come this with a sense of like we're shaming people who have some game like this is no, not no, no, that no, no. i'm just making fun yeah. of you <laughs> yeah okay, okay. So straight. it's like painfully straight <laughs> oh <laughs> i love adam rickster saying i'll i will give it to you straight I'm not. Uh, <laughs> um, and Numan is saying, everyone like this video. Yes, D is reminding everyone to please like this video. We're just here to have fun. We're here to enjoy our time together as a community and hang out. I love hanging out with you guys. So give a like. 
and subscribe if you haven't already. We're on the road to 40K, okay? We're trying to get to 40K altogether. So if you're here and you haven't subscribed, just hit that subscribe button. We do this every week. Um, and, oh, Mustafa's talking about Amy Ron. Don't you have to get a forced sex change if you're gay? You don't have to, but some people do. It's... yeah. It, yeah. Do you want to explain what that is? So, because if so, in Iran, it's legal for you to do to get a sex change up. It's not legal for you to have um, sexual relationship with the up with the same sex, but it is legal for you to get a sex exchange operation. So, some people who are not trans but are gay go get sex change operation not because so it's it's very horrible like imagine that like you're not trans but you're gay but to be with the sex that you prefer you ch you go through sex exchange operation so so that it makes it legal to be with your preferred sex so imagine how horrible it is for somebody to change their gender even though they don't have gender dysphoria just so that they could be with the people that's that would be the way for them to be able to be with the people who they want to be yeah it's so yeah. extreme it's so extreme and people are like forced to do that um uh and i we got a super chat from sid dave but i don't actually like this comment he's saying i'm not i'm assuming it's a he i'm not homophobic as i like lesbian and bi women so you're homophobic because oh. that this statement excludes gay men. So you're saying well, you I like to... I like I like them as long as they're women. Mm. What's wrong with being a gay man? There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing. Mm. Okay, he, he th there's nothing wrong with it, but also you don't have to like gay sex to not to not be homophobic, just to be clear as well. You know what I mean? Like if you are disgusted, okay, he's joking. Like say, he's joking. Okay. 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 But I do want to make that clear. So pay attention to what I'm saying, Susie. I want to see if what you agree with that. A lot of people think that to not be homophobic, they have to be not disgusted by gay sex. But that's not true. You are allowed to be disgusted by gay sex. That would not make you homophobic. Well, there's make a lot homophobic of homophobic if you don't like the people. Yeah, if you don't like the people, yes, but you but it's fine if you don't if you're disgusted by the sex, that's fine. There are a lot of gay people that might be that might be disgusted by straight sex. That's f completely fine. That's allowed. That that's being disgusted by the sex does not make you homophobic. Okay? Um so also we got a she kind of is saying, so as a bi woman, would you date any bi man, Susanna? I would love to date a bi man. <laughs> I would love to date a bi man. I love dating other bisexuals. I don't know how to explain it. It's just I feel understood. Because mm -hmm. usually I'm dating like gay women or straight men. But other bisexuals, like I just feel understood. I don't feel like I have to explain myself. And also like monosexuals, so to speak meaning you're only attracted to one sex, like can be very, very insecure about bisexuals. They can be extremely mm. insecure when really it's not like that. You, It's not like that. I'm dating you because I'm interested in you, right? But mm. people can act wildly insecure about it. So dating other bisexuals is nice because we're. I just feel understood. And yeah. Mm. So that's nice. That makes sense, actually. We gotta get another super chat. Shouts out to my bi kings, my bisexual kings. Okay, sorry. <laughs> oh, we got two more super chats. Um, Gaijin American said, "Is it better to be trans in Iran than Florida?" Oh, because Florida. Yeah. It's better to be anything in Florida. <laughs> so, okay. It's better to be anything in Florida. It's called the Bill unless of Rights. You, yeah. <laughs> unless you're a, I mean, unless you're a rich Shia man that is connected to the government somehow. <laughs> uh, it's, yeah. What? Um, what oh, and there's that? other bisexuals being like, hey, Susanna, I understand exactly what you're talking about. Thank you. Thank mm. you. <laughs> um, 
Alex Schmidt is saying, rumor is in Turkey that you can get out of military service if you're gay, but only if you can prove you're a bottom, not a top. I have heard this rumor as well. And I've heard this rumor that you get out of this by submitting video evidence of yourself this... as a gay bottom. No. And here's the thing. So no. if this is true, this means that the military has accrued possibly thousands of hours of gay content. <laughs> Maybe this is this a, just the first a trick. I've this. I think this, I've, I've heard this before. Is it true though? Because people say a whole bunch of crazy stuff. I mean, they, they do say a lot of crazy stuff. They do. Yeah, so crazy. we don't know if this is true guys. This is true. But if it is true, I'm assuming this is just a trick to get, just get content out of people. If somebody mm -hmm. up there was like, can I get people to just force people to send me their videos? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and are now that too. we're getting more super chats, but they're like very off topic and we do need to cover, finish the show. So, um, no, no, read them though fast. Okay. You, well, this you, is just turning into Q and a, so David, thank you for the super chat saying, what do you think about the nuclear family? Is that something you even support is decline in marriage and family in the West? A good thing. This is a huge topic. Wait, I can I'll answer it fast. You should encourage super chats instead of telling them that we need to. Have a, okay. I, yeah. <laughs> You're like, pe pe people are sending us super chats. How could they? We need to move on. <laughs> Guys, we appreciate your super chats. It's what keeping is what's keeping this show alive. So please keep them coming. I can answer. I'm just getting fast. distracted. <laughs> what do you think about the nuclear family? Is it uh, something you even support? Uh, is it? Is the decline of marriage and family in the West a good thing? Um, okay, so so what I'm, I'm just going to give a quick response. Just as in we went from the extended family to the nuclear family, it's not something that people, um, it was, it could be manipulated and controlled by any people. This is not something that some, certain people will come analyze and advocate and then people listen. Okay. This when economic, when economic situations and the work, uh, the relationship people have with their work and moving from villages to cities change, it was, they were forced into it. This is like a wave that has hap happened going from extended to nuclear family that nobody could micromanage. It will just happen. Whether you judge it as bad as good thing is how people adapt to new conditions. And if we ev evolve from the nuclear family to something else, some people suggest that the next phase is the chosen family. Um, mm -hmm. Again, this is not something that you could decide. It will just happen because it the current um, societal conditions necess necessitate to happen. It will become necessary for it to happen. So it's out of our value judgment. It will, it will just, it's just us as a society adapting to new conditions. Um, that's that. I am laughing at people's reactions to the super chat. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Give us money, but in silence. <laughs> <laughs> okay guys i'm sorry it's just like sometimes it's a lot to run the show you know what i mean <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah i already answered that okay last super chat um you want to read this one yeah um i thank you for the 10 euro super chat J jordan can you tell me what the statistics say about the Iranian protesters? How many are only against the government? How many don't like Islam? And how many don't like certain tenets of Islam? So this is a huge question that we could devote an entire um, show to. The problem is, is that for these last three questions that you asked, well, more like the last two, those are not questions that have been posed via study right so i have seen statistics about how many are against the government my memory is telling me that um basically 75 percent of iranian civilians that were polled in this huge survey were it, supported some form of overthrow of the government so some wanted a hard overthrow some wanted a soft overthrow but at least like 75 percent were supported the protests and supported some form of overthrowing the government. Um, they, these pollsters didn't ask how many don't like Islam, how many don't like certain tenets of Islam. They have separate studies that ask these questions, right? And in, in those studies, they have found that 
Iran is actually a Muslim minority country. There are basically as many people that are non-religious in Iran as there are people that are Muslims in Iran. Um, well, here's here's the faster answer. Here's the website that we get this data from. Okay, it's called gamon.org. So G A M A A N dot O R G. Okay, and you can see the uh, reports here. Okay, so if you click on uh, like the people's attitudes towards the like you have religious views. This one is the religion one, right? Religious views, political views. But if you want to talk about the protest, if you click on this and then you go to this link over here, find here the full report, and then it will take you here and you will see these, all of this graphs and everything for you. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's where you get this information. All right. Cool. Um, and then let's go to... The Another super, super chat, chat by David the Goliath. Yeah. Thanks again. Saying, what do you think about demographic decline in the West and Japan, etc.? Is Susanna okay with a West where whites are a minority? I th I'm assuming you think that I would have a problem with this because I'm white, which is like weird. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. I just want people to have prosperity and be happier. And I want to live in a country that maintains and reflects my values so for me as long as the population of the country are defenders of these values that i find very important which is pretty easily summarized in my my country's bill of rights then i don't care what color people are I don't care what culture they have as long as we share some pretty solid values and free expression and protection of free expression being the most preeminent and the most important. Demographic decline in the West, quote unquote, versus Japan is very different. They're very different. One is way more open to immigration than the other. Like... I don't know. I don't understand. Yeah. It's, for me, it's about well, values. I don't care about ethnicity. I actually do care about this. I do care about, um, because more diversity means that you're doing something right. Okay. So exactly. I, don't, I don't agree. Yeah. So I don't agree that the diversity itself necessarily is doing much. I mean, it does mm -hmm. do some things, but I do think it's a sign of doing something good. Like if, it, the, throughout history, societies who have advanced the most have attracted people from around the world so much that they became more diverse societies. So this is a good thing. This is if you see, you you should be. You, this is something you should be proud of. Like if you, uh, this is other, like in New York, seeing m different kinds of people, th that means that there's something better about New York than other cities. You know what I mean? Like the more like it's, and it's not just New York. Like if you go back in history, Rome was, was more diverse than other cities because no Rome was a superpower. If you went to Baghdad during the golden age of Arabs and Persians, you could see that it was more diverse than other people because Baghdad was becoming a major powerhouse. So this is a good, this is something you should be celebrating. I think multiracial, multi-ethnic societies are objectively superior to ones that are not. How about that? Mm, yes, I it's agree. It's actually superior to have a multi-ethnic society. Yeah. When I go to countries exactly. and cities that aren't multiracial, it's, it's so weird to me. <laughs> it's so weird to me. <laughs> That's why I loved living in Vienna so much. Vienna was like, I mean, partially because the United Nations literally was there and I would go past the United Nations every single day on my commute. But it was like the whole world was living there. It was amazing. So much mm -hmm. enrichment to my life. Okay, so I, I'm going to clap for this next news, but I'm going to... Go to the washroom. So I'm going to put myself down once, once I clap. Okay. So next news. Wait a second. Don't. Oh, wait. <clears throat> next news. How Quran burnings ignited an embassy attacks in Iraq. 
In the wake of a Quran burning incident in Sweden and Denmark, tensions soared to unprecedented heights in Iraq, sparking violent protests that led to the destruction of the Swedish embassy and an attempted breach of the Dan Danish diplomatic mission in Baghdad. The desecrations ignited a diplomatic storm between the Nordic countries and several Muslim nations, as evidenced by the Organization of Islamic Cooperation, or OIC, suspending Sweden's special envoy on July 23rd, criticizing, quote, the granting by the Swedish authority of licenses that enabled the repeated abuse of the sanctity of the Holy Quran and Islamic symbols. The fallout extended into the economic realm as Iraq terminated work permits for Swedish telecom giant Ericsson's local employees. The trigger for these tumultuous events was a protest led by Salwan Momika, an Iraqi Christian refugee residing in Sweden. His deliberate desecration of the Quran sparked widespread outrage among Muslim nations, inciting fervent protests in Iraq. These culminated in hundreds of protesters, predominantly followers of the Iraqi Shia politician and cleric Mutada uh, al-Sadr, storming the Swedish embassy in Baghdad, scaling its compound walls, and setting the embassy on fire. These events underscore the volatile interplay between religious sensitivity and freedom of speech, with destructive repercussions felt both diplomatically and economically. Okay. Um, There's so how, much to unpack here. I have a question. How mm -hmm. many countries came to condemn this? How many heads of states? The, has the United Nations come out and um, issued a, a statement about condemning these actions, attacking embassies? Yeah. I mean, there are. The United States came out strongly being like, what the hell are you? I mean, they were trying to breach the green zone. But no, no, you know, but what I'm saying is, are they? No, I don't think you understand what I'm saying. I don't think there is a global push to come out and say that we don't allow this. This is not a bad. This is a bad thing that we condemn these type of activities. Obviously, this is a crime, and people just generally passing by will say like this is bad. You know what I mean? But there's no, there's no major condemnation. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. Like, for example, when they br uh, burn Swedish flags, right? There's mm -hmm. no people like, oh, there's no global condemnation about trying to demonize it or trying to con con tell these people that they shouldn't be burning the Swedish flag or attacking the Swedish uh, embassy. I mean, obviously, anybody, if you ask them if they condemn this, they will say they will, they will condemn it. But there's not as much, as much of a drive against it as there is when they just burn the Quran. Do you know what I'm saying? I just think in comparison, there's more outrage over the Quran burning than the attack on the embassy. The, the outrage is like not even comparable. Well, yeah, opinion. because the outrage is like felt by the people and expressed by the people, right? Versus when there's an embassy attack, like it's just a government spokesperson coming out and making a statement. Right. Like the scale of the reaction is totally different. But I mean, there has been like very strong statements that were made, but obviously that just doesn't feel the same as yeah. the backlash and vitriol it, of the people. I mean, not just the people, I just think like the politicians in Western countries, for example, um, and the United Nations is also not as they prefer to come out and strongly condemn the burning of the Quran versus you don't see the same type of condemnation when it comes to burning the Swedish flag by these people, which I think they should be allowed to burn the Swedish flag, but also yeah. not, not even a condemn, as strong of a condemnation when it comes to attacking an embassy. I just feel like we are we are bending the knee to how butthurt people get, like rather to how harmful an action is. Like an attack on embassy gets less oh, of a reaction of than burn, burning of a Quran because people are more sensitive about burning a Quran and the politicians are just surrendering to. So basically you're signaling to people, the more butthurt you are, the more sensitive you are, the more we will listen to you. So this is a bad mate. This is horrible. This isn't like a moral hazard. People are learning that they need to become sensitive. We're rewarding um, people being sensitive. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I totally do. 
I think we should, if you scroll down, let's watch this little video that shows what the actual storming of the Swedish embassy. No, no, go up right there. When they set the Swedish embassy on fire. This is wild. Okay. I don't know if you have audio. Do you have audio? Yeah. I have, uh, yeah. It's, it's a pretty short video. Look at this. Should I do full screen? Sure. Oh, yeah. What? Yes. Isn't this crazy? Look at this. They're mentioning the Quran. Mm -hmm. So wait, so after this happened, go wait, you go first. What was this within the green zone? I don't know if the Swedish embassy is within the green zone. I do know that after the Quran burning that happened in Denmark, that's when they tried to get into the green zone. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is because that's where right, the where Dan Danish diplomatic mission is. But because of this, Sweden had to, they had to relocate their embassy. And Iraq has officially expelled the Swedish ambassador and expelled the embassy over this this whole issue they're they're basically cutting off diplomatic ties with sweden because of this unbelievable yeah in denmark the people that did the quran burning there they were also burning iraqi flags which i don't really like because that's like makes it so much obviously like against people um mm. but um so like Given what's happening with Sweden and then what's happening in Denmark, and then we're seeing the I, at the moment we're seeing the boldest reaction in Iraq. Like, what what do you think about all this? Um, I think there needs to be more countries that stand up with Sweden. Right now, they're leaving a lot of countries are per, leaving Sweden behind, mm -hmm. and I think it, and it's such a shame. Like Sweden seems to have one of one of the um countries with in country like a lot of countries in europe don't have a backbone when it comes to defending freedom of speech like That's people crazy. in the uk people in the uk can go to are in jail for tweets which is mm -hmm. unbelievable just coming from a country that was one of the two main two countries that is the reason why we have enlightenment um, values right now spreading around the world and uh, it's embarrassing yeah but sweden um i know the united states has the best constitution when it comes to fighting for free speech but sweden seems to be high up there i mean it's not as good as the us but when comparing to many other european countries sweden's constitution seems to be respecting free speech more than other countries and now they're being challenged and now they might like this level of the fact that sweden is being you know demonized in such a way i don't know if this is going to be possible for them to re take another look at their constitution and change that i hope not but there needs to be a, a, more of a pushback in other European countries so that Sweden is not bearing all of this weight of this responsibility of fighting for free speech uh, in Europe. I, I I hope there are more people in Europe that try to do the same thing, like burn the... I hope more people in Europe decide to burn the Quran just so that their governments have to come up and take a position as well so that you know all these islamic countries are making sweden pay the price but if there was more european countries then it would be much difficult for these islamic countries to cut their ties with all of these european countries like they are they it would be a more it would they would be shooting themselves in the foot even right, right now with sweden who who you think is being harmed more like if iraq cuts ties with sweden do you think that harms sweden more or harms iraq i know i was thinking the same thing honestly <laughs> like you think you're a significant country for you to be able to like hurt sweden by not cutting ties with them like oh, it's really? embarrassing yeah you're a pathetic you know you're you're a backwards country with like a like you have so much oil and your economy is in the toilets like how did you manage that like 
you have nothing. You have power cuts. You have no stability. You have infighting. You have civil war. Your entire government is being controlled by Iran. You have nothing. You have like you have so much problems, and now you want to cut ties with a major European country. Like that's 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 where your priorities are. Like it's embarrassing. Yeah, you it's... you're you're hurting. You're harming the, your own the well being of your own people over a few pages. Like it's um, the priority is completely. Yeah, and it was it's cool. really interesting. I was reading that there's been some reports that have come out that have said that um, th there are people reporting that Russia is actually using disinformation to promote misinformation about the Quran burnings so that it will help destroy Sweden's chance of getting NATO membership. Yeah. So I thought that was really interesting. And also yeah, but Sweden the, is going to get uh, Sweden is going to get NATO membership by the way. So that's done. Yeah. And uh, the OIC, yeah, kicked out the special envoy from Sweden. It's just like Oh my god, there was one quote. I wish I could find it. I have like six different articles I prepared for this news, so I don't know if I can find it, but basically it was like the OIC is trying to implement like blasphemy laws from overseas and other countries and i just hate it i like won't it's ridiculous um oh, <laughs> this person is commenting sweden should expel all korans to prevent it from happening again <laughs> yeah d said the same thing basically like you know what would fix this problem if we banned the quran <laughs> right how would you guys feel um, about that then huh how would you feel about it then? Oh, here's a good comment that you highlighted. Yes, That's my wife's right. boyfriend is feeling fail saying failure to stand up for sp free speech only empowers the far right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Which is why. Also, we got it. We do the yeah, desecration of the Quran here. Exactly. Exactly. By the way, Susanna, I think we got a super chat that is specifically for you. It's the type of super chat that. <laughs> <laughs> that you enjoy the most you're yeah, given that <laughs> Adam Victor, thank you for the super chat and it's just an emoji with the mouth zipper shut <laughs> <laughs> I'm dead oh my god but guys seriously give, keep the super chats coming it's it's what's it's the difference between atheist republic going to red and not so we do appreciate them mm -hmm. whatever susanna says i even if susanna doesn't appreciate it i will appreciate it. <laughs> no i definitely appreciate it i think i'm just like because for the past several weeks we've had you doing a show right after our show so i was like in the back of my mind i was constantly thinking about the time and yeah. now but i don't have a show that today, so yeah, I, yeah. I don't have to worry about it <laughs> yeah. All right, but that was funny. That was uh, that was that was a good one. <laughs> All right, can we uh, clap for the next news? Um, this isn't good, but oh, um, no, no, no one died. No one. I'm gonna clap. I'm gonna clap. Okay. We don't support this, guys. We don't. No, like this is this. ridiculous. All right, next news. Next news: arrested for looking gay how a crop top landed a man in Turkish prison. In a shocking instance of human rights violations, Miguel Alvaro, a Portuguese tourist, became an unwitting symbol of the LGBT struggle in Turkey, following his arrest in Istanbul for merely looking gay and wearing a crop top. Alvaro chillingly recollects the brutal ordeal as he was slammed against a police van and detained for hours. He was then thrown into the grim reality of a Turkish prison where he endured, endured abhorrent conditions, including maggots under his sheets. Alvaro revealed that he was driven in a boat for 17 hours to another prison near the Syrian border where threats from fellow inmates were as relentless as the squalid living conditions. Amid this tribulation, Alvaro also recounted small acts of humanity with some inmates standing up for him. For days, no one knew his whereabouts as he was not allowed to use his phone until late July, where he could finally alert his father. Only after his father's desperate pleas to the Portuguese embassy was Alvaro released and sent back to Portugal at 20 harrowing days after his initial arrest. In the aftermath of this ordeal, Arvaro is determined to raise awareness about the risks to the LGBT community in Turkey in hopes that his ordeal will bring about a much-needed change. 
So this is what happened. This man was a tourist in Turkey, and I believe he was in Istanbul. And um, he was just walking around the street, like wearing a crop top. And I, I mean, this man actually like is gay. But what happened was it was just a wrong place, wrong time. So the way he described it is that unknown to him, there was an unsanctioned LGBT like pride event or some sort of march or something. There was an unsanctioned LGBT event that was happening somewhere close to where he was. He had no idea. And the police apparently have basically quotas for how many people they need to arrest during these kinds of events. And so they saw him. They're like, you look gay. You're obviously going to this event. And they just assaulted him and then detained him. And then he had to spend weeks in this situation. And then he got detained and put to a prison that was like close to the Syrian border. And it was only after like a long time that he was finally able to get in touch with a family member who could finally alert the diplomatic mission who pulled out all the stops to like get him out and get him home. It's crazy. Or what do you think about this? Guys, remember, this is one of the better Islamic countries. This is like one of the so-called secular Islamic countries. If, if there is such a thing. Um, and this is not even in their law. Like, Turkey doesn't have a law that you could arrest people for looking gay. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. Like, so unbelievable. And was it was it his face or was it the crop top mostly that made him look gay, as they say? I mean we don't really have like we don't know exactly what made him look gay by their qualifications or we don't know exactly why he was saying he thinks it was the crop top it's so hilarious well it's not that i mean it's kind of weird based way people are celebrating this uh, yeah, t so t people don't go don't go to Turkey, I guess. By the way, it's not Turkey anymore; it's Turkey, as we um, they they changed they officially changed the name of the country. Did you know that? Yeah, yeah. So it's Turkey, guys. It's not Turkey. Uh, tourists don't give these countries your money; they don't deserve it. Yeah, exactly. This is it. Like, don't go to Turkey. He's what is this? He's well lying, sold the stuff. Someone's story just saying to... that he's how... lying. They don't believe him. How do they have? How do you know? This is the report by Pink News and by LBC and and wait, where is this one? Yeah, and then you're saying like, who are you? Like, where is your source? Okay, yeah, no sources, no nothing. Okay, what is the alternative story though? Well, he's, he's lying, sold the sub story to the press, and played the gay card. Well, he's not playing the gay card. He's doing the opposite. There's more to it than the, he claims. There's also no official word of what the actual charges were. Okay, well, the report is that the guy claims that he was arrested for being gay. So that's the actual story, right? I mean, yeah. Could, every story, could, every story could be wrong. D is our editor and she goes and looks for his stuff on social media to like include in the comments and she was saying there wasn't much support for him in the comments which is heartbreaking yeah but guys every story could be wrong like we don't we don't come and report the story with 100 percent certainty here right mm -hmm. yeah anyways so we did get a super chat uh, Satish Singh, thank you for the super chat, saying, why do South Asians perform better than East Asians in American politics, despite they are more in numbers and are more loved by non-Asian people? <laughs> what? Is there any evidence behind that? Um, about who is more loved by non-Asian people? Um... Why do okay. South Asians perform better than East Asians in American politics? I have no idea. There were, this would have to be studied. This would have to be studied. Do East Asians make the effort to get politically involved at the same rates that 
Southeast Asians do? Like, that's a question. Like, did they run for office as often? Like, there's so many questions. They perform better. I thought East Asians are performing better. In politics. Uh, in politics. I mean, okay, here's... I don't know if any of this is true. I have no idea. But one thing, one reason why in politics East Asians might not be doing better is jealousy. Because they're doing so good in everywhere else. What? Or, yeah, yeah, there is there is such a thing when you when you are the the elite minor the minority the good minority, if you consider it to be the good minority, other minorities hate you. Sometimes, sometimes that happens. I know that there was a study like that. Uh, but also, there's conspiracy theories. Um, like you know how we have that with the like you the, the, this this happen this happens a lot with Jewish people. Jewish people perform better in many in because of cultural reasons in many places, and that's why a lot of people turn against them because they're performing well, right? So the, the a lot of the conspiracy theories and hates against Jewish people is because they perform well. So East Asians also performing well sometimes lead to hatred against them. That's a, that's a that's something that happens. We got a super chat as well. Yeah, thank um, you for the ten dollar super chat, Cena. That's so nice. See, actually, I just came back from Turkey. It is safe to say it is no longer secular. Erdogan and his lackeys did a number on that country. Damn. Well, that's really sad to hear. Everyone I mm. know from Turkey, like this, it's so funny. I know a lot of people from a lot of different countries. And a lot of people that have experienced like really bad things in their countries of origin, but I don't know anyone that hates the country that they come from as much as the Turkish people I have in my life. It's kind of strange. I can't really. <laughs> mm. Well, I mean, not the country itself, the conditions of the country, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Exactly. Okay. Um, let me, oh, we already highlighted this one. <clears throat> All right, so can we can we hide, can we clap for the next news? Um, oh, this is a little bit sad, but it's not. Uh, no one died. Nobody died. Can I clap no. then? Uh, yeah. Oh, it's sad. <laughs> okay, this is not again, guys. When we clap, it's not. It doesn't mean that we approve. It just means that nobody died, tortured, or molested. Next news. Next news. The heartbreaking persecutions of musicians under Taliban rule. Under the harsh reign of the Taliban, the vibrant melody of Afghan culture has been muffled. After seizing power in August 2021, the Taliban imposed draconian restrictions on women, diminishing their role in society, and it wasn't just women who bore the brunt of their tyranny. The country's musicians also fell victim to a concerted attack, excuse me, a campaign to eliminate anything deemed un-Islamic, culminating in regular attacks and a ban on music. For many, like Javid uh, Shaki, once a cherished musician, life has abruptly transformed into a bleak reality as he was forced to become a roadside shoe polisher. Quote, the Taliban are enemies of happiness in music. Life has become hell for people, he poignantly expressed. From lively concerts and weddings to a silence that echoes with despair, these musicians, forbidden to pursue their passion, have seen their lives take a tragic detour. In the face of this persecution, many musicians have been compelled to flee or comply, while the Taliban ironically produced their music, underscoring their obliviousness to the healing potential of music in a war-torn country. As the International Music Council expressed, the Taliban have earned, or turned Afghanistan into a silent nation where the right to enjoy, create, and express oneself through music has grievously been stifled. So I thought that this was something really worth um, covering and very interesting to cover because of how, like, I I was reading this report basically about the length the, the Taliban has gone to to destroy music within the country, which is, like, it's so sad considering how 
ancient like Afghan culture is and how unique it is because of its position in the world and all of the influences that created this very specific culture. Like Afghan music is so interesting. It's like if Persian music and Indian music like had a baby. Um, and uh, it's really, really beautiful. Um, and I mean, it's just like, when you see these Talibs like going around and chopping up drums with axes, it I don't even know how to explain it. It just really gives you a sense of like how against life they are to go to the level of mm. yeah. What do, what do you think? Is this a, p a piano that they destroyed? I think that might be a representational image. Hmm. Oh, what is this? Video. The Taliban burns music. No, no, look at this. Taliban burn musicians' musical instrument as local musician we weeps. Oh, this incident happened in Z uh, yeah, Zazi Urb district. Can I, can we, should we watch this video? Sure. Let me. Here we go and full screen it. So they're burning the music instrument of a musician. This is how the person makes money and they're burning it, his livelihood. Mm. Oh, poor guy. Like the Taliban people are laughing at him. Can you understand what they're saying? No. It's it's not it's not Persian. Sometimes it's Persian, sometimes it's not. It depends on the whether or not the Pashtu or not. Well, he could just call him godless. Oh, yeah. Look. Oh, okay. Well, he said, Be Khoda. Be Khoda. Why did he call him Be Khoda? What the hell has that got to do with anything? Yeah, good, good catch, by the way. By the way, I see Twitter's video is still Twitter's video player is still crap. They changed the name. They have they haven't fixed that yet. It still like, it stops like it buffer like it buffers more than any video player. I don't understand how they have so much money and they can't fix that yet. It was really sad because in this report that I was reading, they were interviewing this guy, and he's someone who lost like both of his sons in the war. And what he does to comfort himself, like his therapy is like, Aww. he just plays his flute like in the mountains. And he's like, do I really have to be afraid to like just play my flute like in the mountains? This is like the only comfort that I have. And so it's so cool. like, they're not even allowed to play music at weddings. At weddings. And that's so that really stands out to me because weddings, like especially in Afghan culture, are such a huge expressive moment. Like if you've seen mm. an Afghan wedding, like they do not mess around. This is serious business. Like it's a party. It's awesome. And the music is such an integral part of that because it's a celebration. Like, yeah, how it's almost so i mean it's so hard for me to conceptualize like hating your own culture to this degree this is this is why when people say oh taliban what taliban wants is just their culture right and you should just understand that this is what they want this is the culture and like no it's not <laughs> like this is why a lot of um afghan people get upset when you tell people like okay guys we have to be understanding we know we have our own way we have our own culture and values and people in afghanistan this is you know you might not like the taliban way but that's their culture and it's people are like that is not that is not their culture what are you talking about that is it's not their so culture. insulting <laughs> it's so insulting one of the most destructive forces to afghan culture 
Yeah, this is being forced upon them. <laughs> this, <laughs> it's, comple- it's completely foreign. It's completely foreign to Afghanistan. And it's being forced upon them. Like, it's only bad when the United States, like, forces their way upon people. But if some other um, moral system and comes out foreign and forces it way on a, upon a country, that all feels sudden an awkward world. Right? You know, it's, it's just so Western-centric to think, it like, really anything... Ad- Anything other than Western culture is just their culture. It's like a how do you of think? Mixed culture. How do you think an ideology from the freaking seventh century Arabian desert got to Kandahar? Like what? <laughs> oh, this is Jordan I've heard is putting this well. Oh yeah, he's saying the Taliban, the culture of a racing culture. That's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So engage in America. I'm not going to say that, but engage in America. Say, I'm imagine, saying, imagine if people, if people say, say the triple K was American culture. Exactly. I was going to say triple K as well. I mean, in a way, the uh, triple K like is uniquely was was a part of American culture, though. Part of, but to say yeah. this is American culture, that's the difference. Yeah. Um, yeah. Guys, uh, Susie said, if you have news to suggest, our Discord server is in the description. So people you're saying, Big Gully Hindus is saying, please say something about recent sex scandal in Pakistan University. Join our Discord server, link in the description. Uh, that's where you could suggest news to us. But also, please, guys, if you want to support Atheist Republic, one thing you could do is to go to the Discord server and get it active. Like, make that place um, a great, uh, an yeah, active community. We it's need like having our live chat out. 24-7. Hang out, make yes, friends. Exactly. 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 Anyways, I can see that we cannot. I'm assuming we cannot clap for the next news. Yeah, this is our this is definitely our worst news this week. All right, guys. This is the worst news this week. We're gonna go through this, bear with us, and then after that, we're not gonna be the it's not gonna be this tragic. Okay. It is so, important. It is important. Okay. So next news. Next news, horrifying honor crime. Indian man beheads sister over forbidden love. In an act of horrifying brutality that lays bare the issue of honor crimes, a young man in India named Muhammad Riza was, no, yeah, Riza's, was, Riaz, excuse me, I'm dyslexic, was apprehended after he callously beheaded his sister, uh, Ashifa, over her forbidden love affair. The shocking incident unfurled on the morning of July 21st in the rustic village of uh, Mithwara, situated in the northern state of Uttar Pradesh. The grisly aftermath, captured on video with Riaz strolling nonchalantly down the street, holding his sister's severed head, went viral on social media, drawing global attention to the crime. The dispute at the heart of this incident was Ashifa's steadfast refusal to terminate her romantic relationship with Chand Badu, a local man with whom she had previously eloped three months prior. Enraged, Riaz, Ri, yeah, I'm Rizaz, fuck, um, retorted, Ria is, Riaz, I think. <laughs> I can't read. Riaz, Riaz. with an unthinkable act of violence. Upon his arrest and subsequent interrogation, Officer uh, Raghuvir Singh revealed that Riaz made a chilling confession, unflinchingly admitting that he murdered his sister because of his vehement disapproval to her love affair with Badu. He further expressed his indignation at uh, Ashifa's adamant refusal to end her relationship. This grotesque act, a stark and distressing reminder of the lethal honor crimes that continue to plague societies around the globe, sent shockwaves through the community, inciting a call for greater measures against such heinous acts. So, this is like super... I saw I saw the footage of this that like completely uncensored right and armin do you remember that case that happened in iran i think it was last year where that guy murdered his wife because she ran away from him because he was abusive and then he beheaded her and was just walking down the street with her head in his hand it was basically that exact same thing Mm. You like you see him carrying something and for a second it looks like a bag and then you're like oh no he's carrying this severed head by the hair in his hands and what's so sad is that so apparently this girl wanted to run away with 
this guy that she was reportedly in love with. And so they tried to run away together and the police arrested them. They arrested her boyfriend, charged him with kidnapping and returned her to her family. And then she was murdered by her family. She was murdered by her brother. Meanwhile, her boyfriend is still in jail. What about the brother? He's in jail too. Okay. So yeah. consensual. So they're both adults. Mm -hmm. The boyfriend and okay. So consensual adults decide to leave together and be and be in love with each other and spend time with each other, and the government considers that kidnapping, and sends you by force to the family that treats you like this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So here's the thing. So the so I'm a, the 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 brother and the sister. They're from a Muslim family. I'm assuming. Am I assuming right? Yes. My understanding mm -hmm. is that yes. Yeah, so these these people are Muslims. I mean, obviously by the name, and then. The the I've heard I based on some reporting that her boyfriend was like even from the same community like the same caste same religion like everything they just didn't the, was, so it was it wasn't was even married. like oh this is a lower caste situation blah 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 because that's commonly a, a impetus for honor crime. Um, so this one is just outside of marriage relationship. That's why it was um, a bad relationship. The fact that I it think was they outside even of wanted to get married, they just had to run away. Like it said that they were trying to elope. That means that you're trying to run away to get married. Yeah, but they were together before marriage, so that's what makes it forbidden. I guess. I guess. All right. So here's the thing: we have seen now multiple times where people from an Islamic um, family, when they behead the woman um, for honor honor related issues uh, that they that they carry the head and walk with it for people to see so they hang they and they display lack of care and pride while they're walking around and they are basically there to get arrested but they want to display they want to be seen with the head of the person in their hand right so because some people might ask, like, if you are so, what if this is like a crime that of passion, a crime like that in anger, like, why are they going out of the why? Why would they, if they're just you, you, you would assume that they would just kill the person, but to, mm -hmm. to behead somebody takes a lot more work than to just kill somebody, right? So you would say, like, why, why are they like doing it? Why are like, even if they're killing the person out of anger. Why are they going out of their way to just behead the person? And then why are they carrying, like, why are they going out with the head and displaying it? And I think the whole, that extra, those extra steps is, I think people who don't understand this don't understand the psychology behind this. The killing was not necessarily out of, like, it wasn't just the anger at that person. It's about, you're standing within the community. That's where most of the hurt is coming from. So a person that is doing this, the major, the emotional uh, damage that they're experiencing is not that this person, the sister, my sister did something wrong and now I want to get revenge off of her. That's not the thinking. The thinking is that I, my, my standing in, so, in society as a man I am being, I am, it's embarrassing. It's ridiculous that a man lets his sister do such a thing. Like I have no control over the woman in my family. So with that mindset, then you, you see why they want to display the head in public because you are bragging about, you want to, you want to restore your manhood, your standing your reputation as a man in society you want to be like look i am not a person this is what you're saying basically look at me i am not a person that would tolerate the woman in my family do such a thing i am willing to pay the ultimate price for it i am willing to go to jail for it because I, we are not like this this is our family is not like this women in our family don't get to just do this and get away with it we have control we are not weak men. We are strong men. Women in our family 
are not out of control. If something bad happens, we clean the honor of our family. So that's the mindset that you have to look at this to be able to, I mean, not to make sense of it because it doesn't make any sense, but to just to be able to explain what's happening here. I don't want to seem like I'm excusing things by explaining it. I hope you people understand what I'm saying. Here. No, of course, it's you're not justifying it, but it is yeah. really important to understand the internal logic of these actions, right? Right. Um, but yeah, exactly. They they these incidents and these cultures do have their own internal logic. It's just one that's extremely abusive. And it makes me so upset knowing how many women try to escape these situations and they're constantly returned back to their families, especially the, it's, it's considerably worse in a lot of countries that have male guardianship laws um, where they're constantly returned back to their abusers. And then it's to the point where it's like, honestly, Actually, I shouldn't say that. Like, it would just be, they you're basically returning them back to get killed. Like, in a situation like this, like, when a woman is returned back, I'm like, there's an extremely high probability that she will become a victim. And it's because of the authorities. Yeah. It, it, this is why it, a particular issue in India is when people want to get married without their parents' consent because of all the cultural factors that come into play, the police will often automatically side with the family, even if they're fully grown adults and they're all consenting, but they'll, you, you can just file a kidnapping charge against people. And then this, and then they get returned. And meanwhile, the boyfriend is the one that's still in jail. Mm. Yep. Yeah, so a lot of people in the chat said that they have seen the video. Wow. It's, it's guys, horrific. Okay. It's so bad. Yeah. Okay, so let's read the super chats and then thank you guys again for the super chat. But is saying certain Sunni Islamic sects allow Muslim men to marry Christian women and Jewish women. Armin, is this allowed in Shia Islam too? Susanna, what do you think of interfaith marriages in Islam? Yes, in Islam, both Sunnis and uh, Shia sects believe that um, people who are Ahl al Kitab or people of the book, which means uh, Jewish and Christian, the men can marry Jewish and Christian women, but but Muslim Muslim men are allowed to marry Christian women and Jewish women, but Muslim women are not allowed to marry anybody other than Muslim men. Yeah, uh, if you're asking for my opinion, that's exactly what I was going to say. I was going to say it's one sided. <laughs> one sided, yeah. Easy answer. One sided. Yeah, but Muslim men are not allowed to marry any other religion. So Muslim men are allowed to marry Muslim women, um, Christian women, and Jewish women. Um, other women, if they're interested in, they have to take them as sex slaves. They can't marry them. But they are allowed to have sex with other women as well, but as long as they take them as sex slaves. Islamically, that's what you're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. Most Muslims don't know this way or, or believe it. Okay. But anyway, so next super chat is by Oxymoron says... The question is, is there any, uh, is there a country that really thrived because of democracy other than the U.S.? Not Japan, not U.K., not Russia, not France, not South Korea, just one success story. Well, no, all of these countries are examples of that. So I don't know why you're saying not Japan. All of these countries are ex countries that uh, uh, thrive because of democracy. And, and well, there are many Russia. other countries like yeah, not Russia, exactly. <laughs> Russia is not a good example. Uh, South Korea is a good example. Um, most European countries are a good example. Um, so, yeah, there's many, many examples that thrive because of democracy. Um, all right. Yeah, I'm curious about why you disqualified those countries all from the other list. Democ yeah, I think I, I need more explanation about your reasoning. Yeah. Anyways. Um, let me go to Asian American Taiwan. Yes, Taiwan. Thank you. <laughs> Taiwan, Hong Kong. Yes. Um, Hong yeah, actually, you can see the difference. You can see how Taiwan and uh, Hong Kong advance better, more than China because they're more democratic. And that's exactly why they're, they're advanced faster, more. <laughs> okay, so let's move on. Um, can we clap for the next news? Yes, we can. You know why? Why? Because the bad man is going to court. 
Oh, <laughs> okay. oh this was, guy, really? I, yo, I this is why guy. I wanted to cover this. This is why I wanted to cover this. Okay. Okay, okay. I was going to say the slammer, but he's not going to jail yet. But, like, let's be honest, he probably will. <laughs> okay. He's okay. going to the slammer. Okay. Next news. <laughs> Next news. UK's infamous preacher, Amjim Chowdhury, charged with leading a terror group. Amjim Chowdhury, the counter, the controversial British-Pakistani Islam Islamist preacher known for his radical ideologies, has been arrested yet again, this time on charges of leading a terrorist organization. This incident marks another brush with the law for the 56-year-old Chowdhury, who's been previously convicted of terrorism charges in 2016. His disturb disturbing legacy of radicalization underscores the country's ongoing struggle with homegrown, homegrown extremism, while his connections with Canadian national Khaled Hussein highlight the transnational nature of the extremist threat. So this other guy from Canada is one of his co-defendants. They they're both got charged and arrested. Their alleged collaboration online to promote radical views underscores the global challenge of online radicalization. The upcoming trial of Chowdhury and Hussein, both charged with serious violations of the UK's Terrorism Act, will lightly reignite debates around freedom of speech and the legal complexities of combating extremism. As authorities strive to balance prosecution of, of extremist ideologies with upholding rights to free expression, Chowdhury's latest arrest adds another potent chapter to the narrative of extremism in the UK. So, this is some wild stuff. So, Armin, would, are you familiar with Amjum Chowdhury? I just, I just know he's just a radical that like was pro um very radical groups basically making excuses for them and defending them in the uk so what is he being charged with exactly like why is he i believe he i don't remember the exact number off the top of my head i can go double check i believe he's facing six different counts under the uk's terrorism act oh excuse me three counts he was charged with three counts under the terrorism act directing a terrorist organization membership in a banned organization and addressing meetings to encourage support for the organization those are the three charges um and the these relate to the radical muslim group um i'm, I'm not sure how to pronounce this al muhad jirun al muhad jirun which is outlawed by the british government in 2010 and so the thing is that the prosecutors say that, okay, this group was banned in 2010, but then they just change the name or make, you know, shadow organizations. They make front organizations and basically continue their same activities. So one of these organizations that was basically a front was called the Islamic Thinkers Society. And um, according to the prosecutors, Chowdhury gave lectures for the Islamic Thinkers Society on the establishment of a British, excuse me, the Islamic state in Britain and how to radicalize people. Um, yeah. This, and this guy is very famous for people who don't know. This guy is like a big deal. Big, oh, big, big deal. Huge. He's infamous in the UK. I mean, particularly in, I think, like the past 10 to 50. You, you haven't heard as much from him in the past five years, I would say. But in like the 2010s, I mean, this guy was like everywhere. He was infamous in like the face of homegrown extremism, the face of homegrown extremism, and would do go to great, great, great lengths to explicitly promote extremism within the UK. And um, I was doing some research into his background because kind of the height of his, his activity was, so it was kind of like before my time, so to speak, like it was when I was still a child so this was not on my radar right like i recognized his face i recognized his name and i knew that he had this like crazy reputation right so i was looking into the details and holy crap there are some reports that suggest that him and his groups are as of 2015 responsible for 25 percent of domestic terrorist acts in the uk wow that's crazy. Is this is a yeah. super dangerous man. <laughs> but you get arrested for tweets in the UK, though. <laughs> so, but this guy has been taking this long to go to. 
I mean, this would be his second time facing the law, right? He, I know. Last time he was arrested and sent to jail, he served less than half of his sentence. Wow. And his sentence on its own, I can't remember the exact number, it was like less than 10 years. Like, I don't know. When I hear stuff like this, again, I'm like, Susanna, like, you're an American, and in America, I mean, we will throw the book at you, and often we will throw the book at you and put you under the jail for often, like, the wrong things. Let's be completely honest. And the people that they do the worst crimes, they often get off easy. So I'm, I'm, I'm no delusions about that, right? But <laughs> in America, yeah, Dark was like, lock them up and throw away the key. Like, this is the mentality that we have where I'm like, what do you mean he got his sentence was only like six years and he got up only serving half the time with terrorism charges? Like, what is happening here? Is this even <laughs> is this even serious to you guys? What the fuck? <laughs> like, I get so confused. <laughs> But again, I'm like, okay, live. I think I think my red, white, and blue is jumping out. I think my USA is jumping out because I'm like, why is he not under the jail? <laughs> we let the terrorists go after three years for good behavior. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> excuse me? <laughs> Meanwhile, in America, there are like people in our system where it's like, yeah, I just got here on accident and I've been in Guantanamo Bay for like 15, 20 years. And I'm not even in Yeah, we're not, we're, we're, we're not endorsing that, obviously. No, of but course it's not. A, maybe, but, maybe a middle, something in between would yeah. be a good idea. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I would, right, I would so. like, I would like something in between. But, Armin, were you familiar with this guy's legacy at all? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I, I knew, yeah, I know this guy is a big deal and supporter, uh, supporting of terrorist groups. I don't know about the details, but I, I, this guy has been all over the place for many, when many years. I was looking so, into yeah. the details about the level of stuff he's been involved in and how pervasive he's been involved with it. I mean, there are allegations that they were literally doing armed trainings for people to then go fight in a IS while yeah, yeah. still inside of the UK. Mm, amazing it's they couldn't wild. wait for training they couldn't wait to get to syria for training they were little to start here um it's bizarre um okay by the way we're gonna have more stuff like this in the future unfortunately so what makes you say that? that um they're just okay so i don't want to do the fear mongering Sharia is going to take over the Europe kind of, ex- you know, that's too much. Like the sky is going to fall. Europe is going to be Islamic one day. That is nonsense. That's not going to happen, but it is growing. It's going to be more in the future, more of this stuff in the future, but not to the point that it's going to be a Sharia takeover. That is an exaggeration. It's not going to be the, the society is not going to fall apart, but there will be more stuff like this. There will be more radicalism. There will be more um, Muslim viewpoints making its it, 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 traditionally conservative Islamic view and all, even radical Islamic views is going to spread more in Europe. There's going to be more of that. And it's going to clash and it's going to make things difficult. It's going to make democracy difficult. It's going to make, it's going to destabilize things. Not to the, again, I'm not saying, I don't want to fear monger to the point that some right leaning people do to say like the whole thing is going to fall apart. No, but it is, it is going to be a bigger challenge, I think, going forward. Mm. Do you understand mm. what I'm saying? Yeah. 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 I think it's important yeah. that immigrants don't become ghettoized. I think that's like the, one of the main things we can do to combat that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, we have three super chats. Gaijin Americans saying, not Hong Kong, they have corporations in their legislature. Okay, I'm saying compared to China, Hong Kong is more democratic, has had been um, so more democratic and therefore more advanced. I'm not, this is not a black and white thing, it's a spectrum, but I see your point. Um, okay, <laughs> Susie, okay. Um, and Sorry, then we have <laughs> cra- so. Crazy Flung is saying, my name is pronounced crazy. I am by male. I get what you mean, Susanna. So I think crazy is 
um, I think Crazy is like watching the beginning part of the stream. He hasn't caught up to where we are yet. And now. But yeah, Crazy, when you see, you're going to see this a lot later than when we said it. So hi, Crazy, when you get to this part. Um, and then that oxymoron is saying, uh, you misunderstand all those countries industrialize and achieve economic growth before they were democracy. Democracy was symptom. Um, why push symptom? No, that you no, you misunderstand. Okay. Industrialization and economic advancements and the democracy is a circular thing. One advances the other one. So they both, so if you look at studies, more democ democratic values advances um, economic prosperity and industrialization and vice versa. This is not a one directional effect. So I know what I'm talking about here. So I've seen the studies. All right. Also, so, like oxymoron, no offense, but like you are not good at communicating what you mean. Like, yes, I have listened to you actually speak, not just type super chats before. And I was left with the impression that you are just not very good at communicating your thoughts in a way where the other person understands what you're saying. But the good news is, is that this is something that can be improved. This is something that can be improved. Okay. Right. Like I've literally listened to you speak and you just need to communicate yourself with a lot more clarity and specificity. Um, I get it. Meanwhile, Eric Olson has gone off the deep end and says that we should implement full Sharia law for Muslims in the West, including amputations of limbs, capital punishments, etc. I don't know what the hell is wrong with you, Eric. Why would we do this? Why would I don't want that in my country? I don't want this in my culture. It's medieval and it's barbaric. Why would I implement that? in my own society that makes no sense and also what about the people who have the just random misfortune of fate to be born into a muslim family and so what they're just they're just, they're just by because they're just born into this family they have no choice in the matter you're now going to implement these laws over their lives what about the people that want to leave that what about the ex-muslims you do know that if we fully implement sharia law then we have to then execute the ex-muslims who want to leave it right what about the gay people they just happen to be born into this family and you want to implement the laws over them like think through what the things you're saying because you sound like a complete fucking dumbass right now wow so this is that's one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. It's so <laughs> stupid. Like, oh yeah. Oh my god. You do know that we don't want these things because they're barbaric, right? What logic does it mean to be like, yeah, fuck these people. We're gonna implement it on you harder ourselves because we don't like it. That makes no sense. It makes no sense, absolutely. That's insane. That's insane. You know, you are becoming the monster that you're trying to fight. You're becoming them. I mean, by them, I don't mean Muslims. I mean by the people who are actually enforcing those laws. You're becoming worse than the majority of Muslims who don't actually, you know, endorse such laws like this because they don't even, yeah. So congratulations. You bec you have become the thing that you hate. Um, by the way, somebody is saying uh, the invite link is invalid or has expired. I just uh, if you're talking about the Discord invite link, I just checked it and it works completely fine. Guys, link to our Discord is in the description. So I don't know which you're not being very specific about what has expired, what invite link has expired. Um, okay, uh, can we clap for the next news? By the way, that um, was a good. Susan, I just want to say that was a good rant. I appreciate that. I think. <laughs> I, I no, I, I seriously, it's very good that you do this because we want to make sure that we are just because we are highlighting certain problems within the Muslim community and the Hindu community and the Christian community that sometimes I worry that we might be in, you know, spreading hate against an entire group of people for people to feel like it's um, acceptable to endorse very, very horrible practices and behavior and i want to make sure that people understand we that we don't do that and your strong position against anybody that says like that is very very helpful so please keep them coming it's, it's very I, I I've really heard. let's become yeah. full isis to show them that we don't like isis like what the fuck <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> exactly. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We'll show them. Yeah, you, you, you say you like Islam so much. Let's see how much you like Islam when we start throwing gays off of buildings to show you how bad. Those, Islam okay, is. YouTube. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> YouTube, we are not saying these things. This this video just got demonetized, by the way, guys. Please like the video because we need your support. Uh, because uh, we're not gonna show up in the algorithm or anything anymore. So. But so please try to fight back the algorithm by liking this video and leaving a comment after the stream is over. Thank you very much. YouTube, if you decide to strike us, we're just making fun of these like this. Um, anyways, <laughs> can we, can we, uh, AR, <laughs> Tesla likes what you're saying. <laughs> thank you, Tesla, John. Uh, already like thank you thank you all uh, right well <laughs> thank you we need <laughs> all right can we clap for the next news or not uh yeah because this is just the iranian authorities being ridiculous okay good we need that right now we need some well we don't need this okay i don't I have I know what you meant back. we you know what you mean. Okay. Um, next news. Next news. Iranian judges rule actresses as insane for defying hijab laws. In the ongoing enforcement of strict mandatory hijab laws in Iran, three renowned actresses, Azadeh Samadi, Leila Boluka, uh, Bolukat, and uh, Afsane Bayagan, uh, were convicted for defying the country's hijab rules, with judges offering controversial diagnoses of mental disorders as part of their punishment. Veteran actress uh, 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 As Afsane Begon was handed a two-year prison sentence alongside a travel and internet ban after she attended a film ceremony wearing a hat instead of a hijab. She was also ordered to receive weekly psychological treatment for a anti-family personality disorder, a diagnosis not recognized by any modern medical body, an anti-family personality disorder. Samadhi, for a similar tr transgression, was denied access to her phone, her social media accounts were shut down, and she was ordered to undergo bi-weekly psychiatric treatment for an antisocial disease. Bullocott faced uh, charges after posting a photo of herself without a hijab on social media, with judges diagnosing her with mental illnesses as well. These decisions drew criticism from psychiatric and psychology boards in Iran, with four heads of psychiatry boards penning an open letter to Iran's judiciary treat chief, condemning the diagnoses as unscientific and strange. They urged authorities to reconsider the sentences against the three actresses. This event underlines the rigid enforcement of hijab laws in Iran, impacting not just ordinary women, but also public figures and artists. Quote, the culture minister has personally issued, oh, this is a, actually, never mind. So I'll just leave it at that. So this is one of several hijab related news stories that's been happening recently. So one of them is that all of these <laughs> actresses were diagnosed with mental disorders because they didn't want to wear the hijab. The other one that I wanted to touch on this week is that there was a woman who was basically given the option of she can face punishment for not wearing the hijab or she can go wash corpses. Did you hear this news? Yeah. Yeah. Can you tell us more about this? So, so do you, the whole thing, because I have an opinion about the whole thing. Right now. Go for yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. So, so if you did the thing that they are, all of this has in common is that they trying to humiliate these women. Mm -hmm. Right. So they first started by giving them punishments such as going and, and cleaning the streets. Right. So sending them to jail turns them into bigger heroes. So they thought they're trying to come up with ways to make them feel embarrassed because these are major celebrities, right? And these major celebrities taking off their hijab is really scaring the government because a lot of people worship these, see these people as, as idols. So, and if you put them to jail, they become even bigger idols, right? Um, which so they they told some of them to go clean the streets and they some people some of them celebrities some of them not but there was videos of some of them bragging about like why 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 would I be ashamed of this I I, I like cleaning the streets like she was like showing her like 
uh, you know, we're posting videos of herself cleaning the streets and we're like this is great <laughs> i i enjoyed like <laughs> i enjoyed the, doing the service for my people so oh yeah <laughs> we, we, Sorry, yeah on. no and also but well also people were criticizing like why are you embarrassing them by making them clean the streets are you telling people whose job is to clean the streets that they're mm that they're beneath others like if you see this as a punishment what are you telling if you're trying to humiliate these people by making them clean the streets what are you telling the the working uh, people who do it, that this is their job and now the same thing with this right so this a lot of me uh, mental health experts are worried about because in iran unfortunately like a lot of other countries less advanced countries mental health problems is seen as an insult or mm -hmm. something to be ashamed of, right? And the government is using the taboo of somebody being mentally ill as a way to humiliate these women, which in a country that we need we need this to be less of a taboo is so dangerous to try to introduce this. Like the government, so this is not at all about, you know, scientific, it's not, as, as, as you mentioned, not scientific at all. The government is trying to highlight the taboo of being considered mentally ill as a form of punishment, as a humiliation, as an embarrassment on these women, which a lot of mental health, health experts are saying you are not only this makes no sense, this is going to be very dangerous to us trying to normalize people coming out and reaching for help when they have mental disorders if you are adver advertising this as a form of punishment and embarrassment and humiliation right and also washing dead people in the in the morgue is also something that they these are basically people are trying to say like how could we make these women like what do what do they hate the most like we can't we can't do like because everything they're trying to do is backfiring right if we if we harm them the people are going to, you know, so like maybe they're maybe they feel icky washing dead people. How about that? Like, what can we can can we make other women really like they want to make uh, they're trying to come up with the punishment that has the least amount of backlash and turning these people into heroes, but at the same time having the highest preventive um, effect. And they're thinking, like, maybe this woman will be very, very, very afraid of washing dead people. So how about we make them do that so that other women get scared of them having – making an example of the, off of them so other women don't do that. So it's just so bizarre. The whole thing is they, every time they're trying to embarrass these women, they just embarrass themselves because people are sharing these stories as a way to show how backward and how vengeful the government is. But, yeah. Yeah, I, there was also an incident where um, the there was a film festival that was going to be happening, and they in the film festival's poster to promote the event, they included a photo of a woman without hijab, and so they banned the entire festival. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, the entire festival. Yeah, um, it's, they're completely losing the control. Like there's nothing they can do. They, they have lost control and it's just going forward. And the, and people are enjoying watching the government being so desperate to try to get a control over this and failing. People are celebrating that. Like they, they're, they have trying everything and they keep changing tactics and it doesn't work. Yeah. It's, it's over. It's completely over. They have lost it. But yeah. Look at this. Where do you moment. think this I know that that photo is so iconic. Yeah. So where do you think we're things going. go from here? It's good. We're going to have more clashes, a lot more clashes. There are. Um, and even if the hijab thing is over, there's going to be other things. Like we have people showing it's, it's not just taking off hijab anymore. People are showing up with crop tops and mini skirts and people are going, you, you sent me a video of a woman would going into, um, a, 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 a shia ceremony and taking off her job and dancing like the there's no end to this thing i've ever seen can, can we you, show can that? We share that yes like i'm i'm like i'm like the every time i think like oh yeah years to come we're gonna see even more clashes you send me you send me something that were like oh my what the hell this, guys you need to see this <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah can you bring that up oh my god where, where did you send well, it to me on Instagram. Um, 
Can you send it to me? One thing that I did want to touch on that is, well, you pull that up that I think is really interesting. So for those who don't know right now is Muharram, which is like a religious mourning month um, uh, in Islam. And it's especially important in Shia Islam. And what happened recently was that usually this is a way for the government to show their support for the Islamic Republic and to show the mass mobilization of people during Muharram and everyone wears black, right? Which is why Armin has not been wearing black <laughs> for every <the> past few <laughs> weeks. Yes. And um, so what civilians have been doing instead is this actually made me cry. There's been, and there's these mourning processions that happen for Muharram, right? But what civilians have been doing is they wear white and they've been going to do processions to the homes of protesters and civilians that were murdered by the government in, in playing songs of like the revolution. And, um, it, it, it made me cry. It made me cry so hard. <laughs> have you found the video? No. Yes, I did. I just, it's on Instagram, which I hate. So I have to refresh that. Okay. So here, let me, let me try to do this. Share this tab instead. So because Instagram doesn't have a pause button and playback button and a play button, we have to like refresh it. You have to share it here. Okay. So here. So Wait, I'm going to do, do it without, do context without people. Should I do it without the idea, right? So yeah, because yeah, there's yeah. The, we don't there's need the, the idea. Like, yeah, we don't need the idea. So this is in a Muharram, like a very religious Shia ritual for Hussein. And these are hijabi women. And they're trying to attack this woman because she showed up without a hijab in here. But she not only showed up without a hijab. Now look what she does. She's like, look at me. Look at that me. Look reveal. At it, look at it. The reveal. Yeah, and like, she's like in this do... orange, yellow dress. And she's like, look at this. This is be this is crazy. This is beyond this is beyond bravery. I can't even call this brave. To call this brave is an understatement. To call this brave is an under do you understand what I'm talking about? Like she just went into the heart of the line. This is not just in Iran. This is in the middle of a religious ceremony. And like the fact that she's even there without her job, it's already bold. And these women are like coming to her and attacking her and trying to get so she showed up with a hijab there and then she went she in the middle of there she took off her hijab but not only look how strong she is i don't even know how to describe this this is insane look she's like look at me the look way me. she stands there and then like oh my god and the level of butthurt, like I wish you could look at look at the the hijabi woman, like they are they don't know what to do with themselves. I mean, I wouldn't either. I have no, <laughs> I don't know what to do. I, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> the moment this is just so this is like a legend. This is the moment that you see the Chadori lady. They just so frustrated she moves her hand like i don't know this is and the woman just standing up strong and like this is who i am this is a, this is who i am this is what you have to deal with and this is this is a message to the entire religious establishment this woman represents the movement they're like look at me look at me i'm here what are you gonna do what are you gonna do there's nothing you could do and the frustration that this chadari lady represents this just encapsulates all of what is happening the fact that they that she's there and they want her out of here and there's nothing they could do and and the contrast between the orange colorful dress it's, and the it's black it's so like life in the face of death yeah, exactly. she's wearing an outfit that is very similar to the women the outfits that women wear for Nowruz which is literally like Nowruz is an ancient Persian celebration of life. And so it really does feel like this is life in the face of a death cult. This is an entire summary of everything that is going on because you see black versus color. You see frustration versus pride. You see, um, you see power and pride versus shame. You see religion versus secularism. You see uh, slavery versus freedom. It's all there in a few seconds, captured all, all at once. 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't know. This is perfect. It's absolutely perfect. And also the fact that this woman, people have paid heavy prices for this. Just for not having the hijab, people have he- paid a heavy price for this. And she she has gone beyond that. She's like, I'm not, I'm not just going to take off my hijab. I'm going to take off my hijab, go in the middle of a very religious ceremony and dance with pride. And I want to know what happened to her. Yeah. Like, what happened after this? I have to know. Yeah, that's crazy. Anyways, thank you for showing me this. Yeah. yeah. Susie is up. Susie, like, I I am, like, I keep, I keep trying to keep trying to keep up to date with the news. But Susie, she is on top of all this. Like, it's amazing. <laughs> I am I am in I'm in tune with Persian social media. <laughs> I put Armin on to things, okay? Yeah. Um all right, so we have one super ch- what? <laughs> Sorry, I was just thinking about um a conversation we had recently where you said that I'm more Persian than you are. <laughs> it's true. I think it's true. Well, we should, yeah, yeah. We should say Iranian, maybe not Persian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a joke. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was really yeah, funny. Yeah, yeah so based. So, yes, Doorknob has saying Susanna is a force of nature. Yeah, oh, exactly. thank you. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'm gonna quickly address this. Oxymoron is saying, name one big country that started as a democracy and then industrialized except U.S. So, Oxymoron, you don't, I don't think you understand how any of this works. Uh, these are, democracy and industrializations are not binary. There is not like you, uh, it's not um, on and it's something that you could turn on and off. These are spectrums. These are spectrums that you move along with. You could have less democratic and more democratic. It's not undemocratic and democratic. And these things happen mutually at the same time many, in many places and they grow together. So, that's how it works. So it, m- most things in social sciences are not black and white. They are a spectrum. All right. I'm so <laughs> some of these comments about me being Persian are so funny. Susanna is the abstract idea of Iranian. <laughs> <laughs> I've just become a diffuse concept. Okay. <laughs> All right. Can we clap for the next news? Yes, we can. All right. Next news. Next news. Atheist inmates victory. Judge rules against forced religious rehab. In a landmark case, a West Virginia federal judge ruled that forcing an atheist inmate to partake in a religiously affiliated substance abuse program for parole eligibility infringed upon his rights, marking a significant victory for secular rights within the criminal justice system. The incarcerated individual, Andrew Miller, filed a lawsuit against the West Virginia state government last April, accusing it of enforcing Christianity on prisoners and disregarding his atheism. In a decision that underscored the constitutional implications of such mandate, Judge Joseph Goodwin wrote, quote, Mr. Miller to Mr. Miller, forcing Mr. Miller to choose between two distinct but equally irreparable injuries. Miller was either to, quote, submit to government coercion and engage in religious exercise at odds with his own beliefs or remain incarcerated until at least April 2025. Judge Goodwin subsequently requested a preliminary injunction to expunge completion of the religiously affiliated program from Miller's parole requirements. The case drew attention to many substance abuse programs' inherently religious nature, raising constitutional questions regarding their mandatory nature for inmates. In response to the ruling, Jeffrey T. Blackwell, Litigation Counsel for American Atheists, remarked, quote, without Andrew's willingness to take on this fight, West Virginia would continue to unconstitutionally impose religion on people in its corrections system. So, here is a very, like, broad, high-level overview. Basically, there was this guy, he was an inmate in West Virginia, and um, he decided to, uh, because I believe he was a former addict, do a, a addiction program to, and, and usually um, 
I'm no expert, right? But oftentimes doing an addiction program can improve your uh, likelihood of getting parole and being able to get out of prison earlier, right? Serve less of your sentence and get paroled earlier. But so one of the few, the only, I can't remember if it was the only or just one of the few um, programs that was available to him was Alcoholics Anonymous. And the problem with Alcoholics Anonymous is that it is explicitly infused with Christian practices and always has been. And there are like versions of the um, Lord's Prayer that you have to do. Like I'll, I'll just I'll just read a little bit of the quote. The suit claimed that Miller encountered religious coercion in June 2021 when he entered the Pleasants County Correctional Facility. Miller was serving a one to 10 year sentence for breaking and entering. Substance was not a factor in his offense, but Miller was enrolled in the program because he is in recovery from addiction. He alleged the federally funded substance abuse treatment program, a requirement, a requirement of his parole consideration was infused with Christian practices, including Christian reading materials in mandated Alcoholics Anonymous or Narcotics Anonymous meetings where the serenity and Lord's Prayer are recited. Due to the religious elements of the program, Miller withdrew from it after five days. Before incarceration, he received secular treatment and maintained his sobriety for four years, according to his suit. And Multiple courts have determined that step-based programs like Alcoholics Anonymous are religious-based because they are predicated on the existence of a belief in a higher power or God. Steps in these programs ask participants to turn their lives over to the care of God and encourages prayer to improve, quote, conscious contact with God. The big book, the foundational document of these programs, this is the most important part. Chapter four, quote, we agnostics, wait. Oh, because they use different programming. Basically, here's a quote. They tell atheists and agnostics that they are doomed to alcoholic death unless they seek him. The chapter characterizes non-believers as handicapped by obstinacy, sensitiveness, and unreasoning prejudice. So this guy was like, I don't want to participate in this. This is explicitly religious. I've been in treatment for four years. I've been sober for four years doing secular treatment programs. And it's a requirement of my parole eligibility that I partake in this program. But if I do partake in this program, this is a violation of my rights because you're forcing me to engage in forms of religious practice that I don't want to be a part of. And so what? You're forcing me to go against my beliefs or stay in jail for longer. I can be jailed for longer or be forced into Christian practice when it is supposed to be a recovery, addiction recovery setting, which should be a, like a healthcare setting. But this is the only program that's available to me. And so they fought it. And the good news is, is that this guy won. Amazing. Good job. You've done it and you've done everyone a service. You have set a precedent. Oh, yeah. look, and um, the, the thinking atheist is saying, you want to read this? Yeah, let me read this um, response from Seth Andrews. He said, I'd never tell someone not to use a program that's working for them, but Alcoholics Anonymous tragically uses a higher power model that insists that solutions must come from without and not from within. This robs people of their agency and it distracts from real world problems, real world solutions, excuse me. And then someone replied to mm -hmm. Seth Andrews saying, I believe it actually diminishes the achievement for the sufferer that they are unable to do it on their own. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I can't find the comment in the live chat from D, but she was basically saying like, yeah, here we go. Tons of U.S. atheist organizations are celebrating this. We needed a win. True. Yeah. Yes. I can't remember. Also, this comment. You... Oh, go. What yeah. was it? Oh, yeah. Um, someone replied on Twitter. Thanks for your. Oh, they replied to American atheists because the um, American atheists were directly involved in the litigation of this guy's case. Um, Wait, scroll yeah. down. You took it away from me. Thanks for your great work on this. This is one of the most egregious violations of the separation of church and state, and no one should remain imprisoned for refusing to participate in religious activities. Awesome. Yeah, we did need to win like this because 
sometimes we see so many things being taken away because secular there's not enough support for organizations like uh, American Atheist, you know, religion, uh, uh, free, Freedom from Religion Foundation and other organizations. So you can see that when they have your backing, they do good work. So please support these organizations as much as you can. So. And by the way, shout out to anyone in recovery right now. If you're mm-hmm. working on your sobriety, if you have been sober, I am so proud of you. That is a major achievement. Mm-hmm. Shout and it maybe maybe you're not completely sober, but you're working on it. I'm proud of you. That's really hard. Yeah. Um, okay. Everything seems good. So we are on the last news. Can we clap for the last news? Yes, we can. <laughs> no. <laughs> I like how excited you get over the stuff I've done. I appreciate that. <laughs> of course I do. That's what I'm most proud of. <laughs> oh, let me oh. turn this off. Oh, so we don't have a show. I don't have a show next. So this is telling me that I have a show, but I don't. Okay. So, um, oh, okay. So next news, last news, last news, last news. Armin has a new article in queer majority. Armin, please bring it forth. It is titled pride flags, kid gloves and Islam's religious right. Armin, give us a breakdown of this article. What are you talking about? In this article well i don't want to give too much of a breakdown because i want of people course. to go read the article right uh, can you link it in the in the chat for people um but you know how we keep talking about trying to come up with a balance of addressing the fact that islam is becoming as we predicted becoming more and more um an issue in Western countries. And there, a lot of people are, uh, don't seem to be equipped with not just the right tools, but the right narratives to address this, right? We are, a lot of people are on the right are addressing this as an anti-Muslim thing. And many people on the left are now being introduced to ways to address these conservative ideology having a major impact in Western countries without trying to be anti-Muslim or anti-immigrant. Um, so I thought, given that we have been talking about this for years and years, um, I would be able to give a good perspective on how I think these conversations can be, what narratives are the most useful to see this as a problem, to show that this is a problem, come up with examples for people, stories that are happening to pe- for people to see that if you are fighting Christian conservatism, then with that same mindset, you should be fighting Islamic conservatism. And it's coming for all the values and ideals and goals that you would have as a leftist or as a liberal, um, all the things that you are fighting for is in contradiction to Islamic values. And you should be standing guard against that as well, not just against Christianity. But again, I, I do understand the concern a lot of people have that this might turn into um, demonizing certain groups of people and for people to take advantage of this and trying to make this into an anti-immigration thing. And I come up with solutions, at least a beginning, a way to talk about solutions that I think would be helpful, which is not only not anti-minority or anti-immigrant, it actually is a way to tackle these issues and that is even pro-minority and pro-immigrant. Um, so if you want to see what my suggestion, so, so I go through the issue and I go through some examples. I give three examples, um, but I also come up with solutions at the end where I think it's the best way to talk about these things. So it's not just it's not just addressing a problem. It's mentioning a problem. It's also trying to come up with solutions at the way at the end mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. yeah, because you specifically talk about the issue that happened in Hamtrak, Michigan, which is like one of the first yes. Muslim majority cities in america and um it recently banned pride flags on public property among other uh, among a few other kinds of flags and the the backlash that happened because of that because when this muslim all muslim city council was elected all the people were like wow look at america we're so progressive blah 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 like we 
you know, look at this is a, this is a stand against quote unquote Islamophobia, you know, because we elected this all Muslim city council. And then what, like eight years later, then pride flags are banned on public property because of, because of the Muslim city council and um, the betrayal that a lot of people felt because of that. Um, so did you see, I think you said, saw that little short video that I sent you recently of what it's actually like in Hamtrak. That short. Yeah, oh my God. Yes. Yes. I've seen that's crazy. Yeah. So yes. in this video, someone went to Hamtrak to go talk to residents about this and they go talk to this group of like Muslim teenagers that go around and steal and destroy pride flags on people's private property and also start egging houses that show support for these things. And there was this really, really old, like white American couple going out to yell at these teenagers to tell them that in this country you're free to be that way and all this stuff. What what was your reaction to seeing that video? Because that was a very startling video for me to watch. Yeah, and and I think it's a sign of more things to come. And I think that a video like that would get more attention if it was like a bunch of white nationalists doing that. You know what I mean? And, and I think a lot of people are afraid of sharing that because they might think like this is going to spread hate against entire Muslims. I mean, but the thing is, like, if a white, if groups of white nationalists were doing that, like, you, you would you not share it because you would think that this is going to spread hate, hate against inter like white people as a whole? You no, know what I mean? like it, it is a. It is a problem. In fact, left-leaning people you... often say that when they do see these kinds of activities from white nationalists, they say that this is actually all white people and deep down. Well, that's, I mean, it's, it's stupid in, uh, from both, you know, in both directions. If you think like this is all Muslims, that's insane. And if you think yeah. this is like represents white people, it's, it's, as in, it's almost as insane. Like we do understand that in the United States, on average, Muslims are more left-leaning or liberal because of, the support that they got from um, because they're minority. So, so the way it worked is um, unlike many other countries on average, um, Muslims in the United States are more tolerant of ideas like this because um, very early on um, p parties and institutions that were more left leaning provided support to these groups because they were minorities and because they were taking a position against more right-leaning right um, institutions and parties, right? So because of this support, a lot of these institutions got connected with each other. Um, and because of the mutual benefit that they got from supporting each other, a lot of the values of leftist and liberal values started um, having a major impact on Islamic institutions and groups and a activists. However, because of the nature of Islam, what we said for a long time is that this is going to, at some point, you're going to see the conservative nature of Islam show itself more and more within the Western world. And even, and, and I'm not saying it's going to be all of them or it's going to take over, but it will, this is Islam that we're talking about. So it will eventually show itself. And we are now seeing that happen, especially especially when it gets to LGBT stuff, especially when it gets, like you could see the first signs of that happening. Like, I mean, you're going to see it everywhere at some point. Um, you know, it's misogynistic, it's bigoted, it's intolerant, it's violent. But we predicted that it will, the first place it, you will see that more being more pronounced than anywhere else will be LGBT. And that, now that's mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. So it's important to, for us to start advocating the proper way of having a conversation about this early on. So, because we can't let right leaning bigoted people steal this conversation from us because it's not going to help. It's not going to help. It's going to be a disaster. Yeah, it's going to be a disaster. So we have to, we have to be able to steal this conversation from them so that we could have it in a healthier and more productive way. Yeah, Oxymoron is saying Muslim integration in the U.S. has been successful, unlike in the case of Europe. And it has been overwhelmingly more successful because Muslims are not ghettoized in the same way that they are in a place such as France. France has exactly. it the worst in terms of the ghetto, maybe not the worst, but they have it really bad in terms of the ghettoization and the seclusion, right? And it's this is exactly why it comes as no surprise to me that the first place we see this kind of activity happen in the U.S. is in a Muslim-majority city. Yes. yes. It, you, it's you, exactly the same model happening again. 
but I'm, and there's nothing that we can do to like, I don't know, explicitly prevent that because we don't have a country in like Singapore where we force people to be desegregated, right? People have in my country the freedom to live like, you know, amongst whatever kind of people they want. Well, you know, there's been redlining historically. There's been cases where that's not true, but the con- my, my government can't come and say you have too many Muslims in the city. You have to not live here. That's what I'm trying to say. This is this is why people don't understand when you talk about diversity, all right? Diversity makes sense if it's actual diversity, okay? Like it will actually So if Muslims are living side by side other people, this will this is what actual diversity uh, looks like and works. Um but you don't have diversity when certain groups of people come in your country and they have their own areas. Because it's not diverse if they're living in one section and then they're living in a different section. Because in, if, you, if you go to that area, you see they are by themselves. So how is it diverse? So when people, when some right-wing people are anti-diversity and they say diversity doesn't work, well, what doesn't work is something that is named diversity, but it's not actually diversity if everybody is living in their own areas. Uh, the type of diversity that works is when people are being exposed to each other so much that it's hard to be intolerant of each other. Like we have seen that being exposed to other people on, on a daily basis, on a regular basis, actually does improve tolerance. If you, It's literally how yeah. our brains work. There are so many studies about this. I studied this in college. It's literally how our brains work. If you are familiar yeah. with something, you're less likely to be scared of it. This is how our brains work from infancy. Infancy. If we are not familiar with it, we will be scared of it more scared of it or more likely to outcast it we're more likely to think that harm against it is fine even children exhibit this behavior before they're even verbal right so this is part of our nature exactly and this works both ways because a lot of left-leaning people uh, talk about this but they keep only talking about how for example um, black people, white people need to see black people to be tolerant of them or see Muslims to be tolerant of them or to be trans people to be tolerant of them. But when it comes to Muslims, you have to understand this works the other way around as well. So Muslim communities are less likely to be radicalized if they are exposed to non-Islamic communities, if they go to work with non-Muslims, if they go to school with non-Muslims, if they shop with non-Muslims, if they go watch movies and celebrate and party with non-Muslims, right? So it's not just about the wider community seeing Muslims and being less terrified with them. It's also about Muslims seeing being exposed to non-Muslim communities and being less hostile to them, right? So... Yes. So everyone, but yeah. please go read Armin's article in Queer Majority. The link is in the live chat. And also you can, it's in the description as well at the very bottom. Um, yeah. And Eric Olson is saying, congratulations. Young Atheist is saying, thanks, Armin. Your work always inspires me. And Newman gave a super chat and said, I read your last article and it was nice. Proud of you. Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that, guys. Thank you for all the support. That makes me, that gives me a lot of motivation. Thank you. And lastly, before I forget, Gaijin American gave us a super chat saying, if God is a fig- figment of your imagination, was it really God or yourself? Part of yourself. Yeah. Something I actually think about that. I actually think about that every time I have a dream. Like there are certain rich characters with person with personalities in my dream like very rich personality and attitudes and when i wake up i'm like that person was part of me because that that person doesn't have any like i'm I'm amazed that my brain created something with such a rich character like i didn't know my brain could do that (laughs) i don't know i'm 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 talking too much i don't know I, I also, I know, and this is irrelevant. I'm just going to make it any author that writes a story like Game of Thrones or like whatever Lord of the Rings, all those characters are part of him. So it's so mm-hmm. amazing to me that all of these characters from with different personalities are part of someone's imagination. I don't know. I'm not going to talk about this. No, no, it is. It is. It. It's so yeah. rich, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, see, people are people. Some people are get 
yeah people people think yeah yeah they're like dude same hard relate our <laughs> hard relate uh, right now armin <laughs> i have that it's so cool okay some people some people understand what i'm talking about <laughs> okay thank you okay okay all right guys um thank you for being here guys do not leave without liking the stream you have to you you know this i say on the persian show i don't know if you understand this if i say it here this show would be haram for you if you have not liked it okay so i will this basically means that we produce this content and if you do not like it that we we will not make the show halal for you that means in the mm. afterlife on the on judgment day i could come and you know tell god that this person consumed our content without liking the video right and you have to pay the price for it mm -hmm. so if you want this show to become halal for you you have to like the video however this part is not necessary but it will very much help actually it is necessary after the stream is over also leave a comment okay because it doesn't cost you anything leave a comment under the show that will really help us grow the channel. So please do that. We spent three hours for you. You could leave, so you could spend less than a minute liking the video and leaving a comment. So please do that. And also uh, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and tell people that this is a valuable channel that they need to subscribe to. Go tell everybody. Okay. Thank you. Unless it's not safe for you, don't do that then. We have fun um, hanging out and we're on the road to 40K, guys. Soon we will hit the 40K landmark our milestone so help us get to 40k subscribe make it happen guys thank you if you have side right, guys. Channels, subscribe <laughs> yes <laughs> all, right. all right guys bye Mwah.